Um, yes, track your arrows. Okay. There you go. That that sixteen was me hiding under the table with my suit, though. <laughs> no worries. We did miss a little bit of the recording, but we didn't miss anything important. Mm-hmm. Uh, just recap. two character, <laughs> two character deaths. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as you guys, my great sword, do I? Michael is now playing a necromancer. <laughs> um, the snake uh, tried to swallow Haldor, but then choked to death, and that's how we lost two characters. <laughs> 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 and Emmanuel ran away. Uh, you guys have you guys have seen Robin Hood Men in Tights, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. Where it's all like, what happened to my dog? Was hit by a wagon. <laughs> my goldfish eaten by the cat. <laughs> my yeah. cat choked on the goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a pretty good part. That was a good part. Freaking Mel Brooks, man. Anyway, oh yeah. sorry, oh yeah. fancy lad. Yeah, fancy lad. Just, just like. It's like, where are the heroes? I wish to offer them a new, a new part in my next play. You fix it, like, uh, mm-hmm. Emmanuel. What's this? You need a performer. Clearly, you're a, a man of good taste if you know that I am looking for someone to um, be part of my next play. I'll have you know that um, my theater has produced the finest of plays. Many of them are being played in Magnamar as we speak. Mm, that's wonderful. I've never had a taste for theater. Oh, come ah, now. You seem like you'd be an expert on the stage. All the Doran fans fawning over you. I highly encourage you to give it a shot. Fawning? Yes. Why? For reading silly lines? For playing the hero. I <laughs> don't have to play it. <laughs> but this way, it's a lot easier for them to see. Hmm. Like, don't push the man to fix this. You, you're gonna chase him away from at least seeing my my great performances. Like, no, come now. If if you don't want to be part of it, that is fine. I just wanted to introduce myself to Sandpoint's new local heroes. Fix it. You've obviously met me, of course. Um, and he introduces. He he does go around and find everybody. He, I'm gonna have him roll perception for <laughs> looking for our little halfling friend. <laughs> <laughs> does not see the happen. Like, well, it seems I've only been able to see four of you. But either way, um, welcome to Sandpoint. I hope the last day's events didn't scare you off. Uh, I apparently heard a frog in someone else's microphone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course uh, not. My name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel Depardieu. I'm not going to be able to do it back to you, but he actually says exactly how you say it. Because <laughs> tight. Fabulous. <laughs> but yeah, he, he stays a little bit longer to like hype up his theater again. Um, hopes that any of them would be in. And if any of, them, any of you who have a penchant for the performing arts, check it out. But otherwise, welcome and thank you for your deed the, the previous day before he eventually saunters back out to basically looking out into the morning sun. He's like, good morning, new day. And then just kind of skips away people with their head in their cl- in the clouds am i right you, you I just so. see an empty bowl come up from below the table <laughs> get set on the table to pull myself back into my chair <laughs> that is theater oh, this boring droll place where people imitate life instead of being outside living it ah sort of art really they tell and based story. off storytelling, yes. Although, given your performance last night to uh, earn your private room, I'm surprised you're not more of a performer yourself. Well, it's good to know an instrument. When you're out on the road on a dark, desolate night, a good instrument can keep you and your companions entertained. Or on a sad evening, Billowy clouds, a little light rain, a, a nice melody can brighten the day. All right, oh, someone Lord. stop them or I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, the person who stops them, ironically, is the sheriff as he becomes coming into the, the building. As um, he is a lot more quiet about it, but he eventually, like while Emmanuel's talking, he just kind of steps behind him and stands there quietly while he's going on. Mm. 
Good morning, hey. Sheriff. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Fixa um, introduces your, himself to the rest of you and asks for your names. Emmanuel. Emmanuel de <laughs> By the, just, end of this, by the end of this campaign, we're all just going to be saying it in unison. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just waiting for him to like throw out his throat one of these days, just because he has to do it like five times with all these introductions. <laughs> he just, he just Skype messages us one day. So the doctor said I somehow dislocated my throat. So <laughs> be able to be in this game for a little bit. Oh, I'm I'm extend his voice box. <laughs> He introduces himself to a lot of you, and um, hold on one second. Um, so he introduces um, after he introduces himself to you all. He uh, was like, "So it seems that the goblin assault isn't the only issue we had last night. We had some issues over at the boneyard. If um, I could get your all all of your assistance, um, many of my guard are on alert around the edges of the." Um, town make sure that nothing else sneaks in but um, you seem to be quite a bit more qualified than a lot of the guards of the town so if you could oblige me indeed your friends from Malthoon will always be there to support you don't know where that is but I'm happy to give the help willing recompense if you're looking for pay we did arrange some Monetar- um, some minor monetary rewards for the lot of you helping the town before I could ensure that it gets to you a little bit quicker. Would be good, yes. Fear if nothing else, I could help guide them around town and make sure they that they don't get lost on the way to this job. Fair enough. Um, if you could meet me at the boneyard in about an hour. Um, I just would like to have some assistance in case there is something I should be concerned of. Absolutely. Kind of gives a nod and doesn't even say goodbye. Just kind of wanders out. Mm-hmm. Fixa, what is a boneyard? Uh, out of character, it's the place where like all the de- ocean detritus it, it, is it gathered. Is the, right? It is the graveyard next to the cathedral. Mm. Um, it has like um, the buildings for people to be like the like nobles and rich people or priests to be buried into oh, okay. as well as the actual like tombstones and stuff of people mm. so she would yeah convey all that especially it's basically a graveyard her, yeah it's basically in her neck of the woods i'm sure so yeah graveyard. um you would know that the person who runs it is um the um he yeah, he's the sorry. other guy, worshiper of saren ray right yeah he's the other worshiper of saren ray um named nafer or Naffer, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, I don't know that we'd be able to do that and get a good hunt in this morning. Well, the hunt is in the night. Yes. <laughs> oh, night. it night. is at night. He said 6 p.m. twice, and I could have sworn he was meaning in the morning. Who hunts at night? <sighs> Did you think the two double negatives made a positive? Many people. I'm sorry, I don't do a lot of chemistry. Many birds easier to catch a nest at night. But we're not hunting birds. Did he say what we were hunting? Boar. Boar. Ah, good, good. Very well, if we're going into some graveyard, I must go change. Uh, character, I do need to take a bio break. I've been increasing my water intake for obvious reasons, so <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> if everyone wants to go ahead and take a bio real quick, we can... Yep. I'm a little Open bit up. skeptical that these boars are going to be nearly as good as the underground boars, but... <laughs> the huge one. <laughs> but the best part about hunting boars is even if you can't hunt anything, you still find boar. What? Aha! Uh-huh. Ah... Uh... Because you're bored. <laughs> oh, that was Gombo. You're on fire today, Gombo. Thank you. I'm going to go pee, too. I'm, I'll go piss in their quarry. <laughs> A random line from one of our games has entered Cope's vernacular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I wind up saying a lot of things that we've said in here and random... random 
um, just out in the wilderness of life. And I'm like, I probably shouldn't say this because it probably seems weird and out of context. But oh, fuck it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's see. Everyone else is peeing, I suppose. I'll go over what we missed on the recording in that uh, the guy we rescued hit on a fixer. Half the town hit on a manual. And we got our rooms paid for, and then we realized we weren't recording. <laughs> yep. Yeah, pretty much it. Um, again, I'm sorry if I just let me know if I'm starting to talk too much. I never no, know no. what's the right amount as a DM. No, it, it's all good. We're we're still like really new with the characters. We've only had like one bonding experience, so <laughs> I think I think it's going good. Eventually, uh, the plot will pick up, and we'll all. I always find myself it takes me like two or three sessions to really get into the skin of the character I'm playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that I'm being a little bit more reactionary. Yeah, shit happens. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm not playing a sociopath, so that's fun. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a change of pace from everyone else's characters before. Mm-hmm. Except for Co. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, when I was thinking of the fruit, the durian, which is mm-hmm. what I liked, is. Yeah. What came to mind? Gotcha, gotcha. So almost like a cactus. <laughs> oh yeah, those things. I don't remember if it's them or some other exotic fruit that supposedly has a really strong smell that is compared durian. to cheese. I, I, I've opened the durian before. It smells like a mixture of bad cheese and rotting meat. <laughs> Didn't taste bad. You just have to go for the scent yeah it's why i would never have it again (laughs) i mean i've had things that have durian in it but opening it and eating it fresh is definitely not for me Mm. (laughs) the um the first year when i took a call a tour of the college i ended up going to apparently they had one of the only corpse flowers in california (laughs) oh god (laughs) and it would only just started to and it was blooming like once every five years and it was that day i was there i'm sorry the weird part was i have smelled worse (laughs) and that is possibly disturbing (laughs) (laughs) or i'm if i'm like everyone's like oh it smells like a dead body and i'm like it's not that bad (laughs) and then they all look at you and then take two steps away yeah (laughs) like what does he have in his garage Jokes on you, I don't have a garage. <laughs> I have a mausoleum. <laughs> I was about to say. So the cemetery is right behind the main wall, assuming, mm-hmm. you know, that's the cemetery. Yeah, it's it all tombstony. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Emmanuel comes back in his medium armor. Because trouble in graveyard. So did you want to go right there? Or did you want anyone want to make a stop before you, they, you guys go there? Mm, nothing pressing speaks to mind. Is, is there a bakery uh, somewhere in town? Yes, there is. There's let me, there's a number for it. Um, yeah, it's number twenty one on the map. Okay. Which is right, over here. right next to the orphanarium. Okay. Um, <laughs> if it's I think twenty seven is the orphanarium, right? I no, uh, I'm orphanage. just okay. Orphanage. I was, yeah. Yeah. I was especially orphanarium. I'm, I didn't know yeah, right. the orphanage of the 41st millennium. Over there. Right, right. <laughs> I was about to ask if there's a minimum security. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, there is one there. Uh, I think so. Make a quick detour to the bakery and make arrangements to have a bunch of pastries delivered to the orphanage. Yep, they do that for you free of charge. After, like, you were such a deer last night, jumping into the fray like you did. Um, there, The old woman that runs it, um, well, old woman, middle-aged woman mm. named Alma. Um, she has a couple twin daughters that work with her that are all busy packing it as you're, like, basically telling them what you want. Mm. Um, and, like, and before you go, she, like, hands you this, like, a whole loaf of, like, bread. Oh, oh. Like, you're looking a little thin today. You need to eat more, Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, she she kind of just waves because you leave. But um, everything everything you give her, or like everything you place the order for, 
she doesn't she doesn't seem to want to charge you even if you offer the money. Mm-hmm. She she would you know try to offer at least a gold coin, but I imagine <laughs> whenever it's clear that it's not going to be accepted, just like okay, I'll save it for later then. And since no, if no one else is doing anything as you were heading through town, um, the there's all kinds of people that are kind of like greeting you um, as you go through. Not everyone is like, oh my god, you're the best people ever. But every now and then you'll see somebody like they'll see you walking through the town, heading towards where you're going, mm. and stop you. Be like, hey, um, I was at such and such place that you were running through, and if you hadn't cleaved that goblin in half. That could have been me that was cleaved in half by them, and yada yada. Mm. Fix will be doing what she can to try to blend in with the group and let uh, Emmanuel and even Haldor take, you know, take most of the attention. Um, Emmanuel and Haldor, you both are actually getting quite a bit of female attention. Up north, you gotta kill a Lenorn for this kind of attention. Even with, like, a very minimal perception role of a natural one, it wouldn't be hard to um, hear a lot of rumors kind of, like, in the... Like, you hear, like, them talking about your guys' availability. Um, every time you turn to hear someone that was talking about you, you see a couple girls or women kind of giggling and blushing as they turn their head away. Yeah, especially since there's bound to be a rumor that Wilhelm is known to have a huge snake. <laughs> um, Haldor, there's, um, one of the um, random sh- um, kids in the street kind of runs up to you and gives you like a single flower. And she says thank you before, like, before you can even say anything, she just, like, turns her head and runs off in another direction. That's nice. <laughs> you guys are all quite popular here. Indeed. Is this a very wealthy village? I mean, about as wealthy as any other village of its size. I've noticed everything seems to be free. I think that makes a very nice village. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd definitely think that people here are, the, the sense of community here is very strong and something that I definitely appreciate even if you know you have those people that try to snip off your hair anyways um yeah so that does yeah. bother you <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that I only implied it mm-hmm. does the uh-huh. I'm watching you eyes <laughs> Yeah, I dare um, but say as that you, if, oh, yeah, if you are looking to settle down, you know this, you'll probably find this town most accommodating. Much too mm-hmm. young for thoughts like that. Many oh, tribes appreciate those that can give them strong warriors. <laughs> Whatever Lucilia was about to say was stopped by that. <laughs> <laughs> And have you fathered many warriors? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> it's quite warm out here. Speaking of the weather. Are you bringing your snake, by the way? Um, no. How long of a walk is it? It's not long. It's maybe 20 minutes. No. Yeah, I just figured I'd ask. Keep it rested for the hunt. Yeah, yep. because uh, this little stress here is 300 feet. Yeah, and there's no need. I think it's actually up to... Oh, correct. yeah, what do you know? It, it is. So... Oh, oh yeah, no. We'd be there in no time. But you yeah. notice uh, Emmanuel no longer is wearing his uh, noble outfit. He's in some... It, what's the weather like in this region? Um, it's getting to be very early, very, very early fall. Mm, like, so. um, the end of August, pushing into September. Okay, so he's not quite in a traveler's outfit, but he's kind of in a, a mix of his, uh, hot weather and his, uh, nice clothes, and then he's got on his very nice, uh, is it Jade Island? Is that the eastern? Uh, well, no, it's, um... It's like the... Im- Tian Z or something, Tian Tian Sha or something. Yeah, Tian Sha is the name of the continent, and it's actually like fourteen different kingdoms. Yeah. Okay, so um, very, very eastern looking, heavy or not heavy, but medium armor, mm-hmm. fine quality. <laughs> fine. In. But as you make your way towards the um, boneyard. 
um, outside the um, the gate area of it. Um, Bellor is waiting for you. He's like, um, thank you for accompanying me. Um, this way over here. And he kind of leads you towards... Um, the, like it's like towards the back end, closer to the cathedral, but towards the very back. Um, no, sorry, not towards the very back. Sorry, the words. Um, see this dot right here, the bigger one. Mm-hmm. It's basically that building. This um, was a longer walk than I thought it would be. It's not that much um, longer than what it was, but yeah, um, it's really far. Yeah, it's um, like you fix will try to stop it and check in with um, what was it? Haldor? What was his? The graveyard keeper's name? Um, that's what I was just getting at. Um, okay. okay. Father Xantis and Nafer, who's the one that Nafer, um, that's one. runs the cathedral, are both sitting standing outside a um, one of the mausoleums. Mm-hmm. Um, you're used to it, but the, for the rest of you, um, Father Xantis is standing beside this man that he has like a club foot and his face is very disfigured. It's like swollen in different places and it's like it looks like he's having he would have trouble seeing it's so swollen. Mm-hmm. But as you get closer, it's not really swollen, it's just almost tumor esque. Gotcha. But he even behind all this, he does give it like a nice warm smile when he sees um Afixa. Mm-hmm. And she would return it with a warm, friendly smile of her own and wave. He's like, I'm so happy to see you after the chaos last night. Oh, it was, it was quite the evening. But uh, I'm glad. Uh, sounds like we got through the worst of it without too much in the way of, you know, harm done. Um, uh, I believe we have you and your friends to thank for that. Um, and he just he does whatever the equivalent of um, like the hand signal of um, like basically saying Don Flower, Don Flower be praised about mm. Saren Ray. Yeah. Um, Father, I'm just hmm? sorry. I was going to say I'm just sorry we couldn't get there before they beset you. Uh, th- I was quite I was quite safe back at my um, shack nearby here. He yeah, fixed oh, it yeah, my room. He, he fixed it would turn and look at Emmanuel and basically stare daggers. It'd be the most angry you've ever seen her for a moment. <laughs> and basically, <laughs> nonverbally say, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> Celia raises his voice. So, I hear there's something going on over here today? Um, <laughs> yes. And fa- change the subject. <laughs> Father Xantis kind of chimes in, like, um, Nefer, if you could please give us a moment to just to speak with them in private. He's like, of course, sir. Um, I have some more uh, manners to attend to. Um, please, everyone, be careful. I take the manner of the Boneyard's maintenance quite personally. So, if you could take care for it like you would care for... Your own family, I would appreciate it. And he kind of gives a nod and um, kind of hobbles be, off. I'll be accompanying them, so it's we'll, we'll be the utmost respectful. Thank you so much. Um, Take it gravely seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and you're on fire today, Garba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, Father Xantis kind of surmised. I'm not gonna like act out the entire thing he's saying. But he speaks of he points to the mausoleum and describes the fact that they that Nafer um, discovered it was hanging slightly ajar, and looking at it, it is ajar to the point where the doors aren't flush with each other, but they're still quite sealed as they're very heavy stone doors. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't expect um, like Bellar kind of chimes in. He's like, I don't expect too much. Worst case scenario, it's probably a goblin that gets trapped in the vault, but. I um, figured just in case I could have you all accompany me and assure that nothing goes awry. You can't, can't allow those creatures to desecrate final resting places. The vault in question is about uh, 20 foot square wide or so. Maybe a little bit b- bigger than that and stands near the wall of the cathedral. It is he's like the most concerning part is the fact that um, this is the mausoleum that we used to hold all the previous caretakers and priests' remains. Mm. This whole situation seems to bear some ill omen that I wish to be relieved of any um, ill 
goblinoid creature that may reside inside. Bones of holy man. Flipped I'm sure Haldor can take down. care of anything in there. Father Dan has to step aside to let you guys do your business. Um, so it's up to you guys how you want to proceed. Uh, let's see here. Can I roll a perception to see if there's any like marks or anything on the door? Yeah, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Anyone who wants to. 27. Oh, Jesus. That, that is, the plus two is already added in. Mm. I just yeah. don't know why I added that. So. Mm-hmm. Investigator mode activate. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> the, 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 it's not quite the ruins, but it's definitely, you know, catacombs. So mm-hmm. she's probably got her game face on. Oh, yeah, she's like, let's see, this could be ghouls, vengeful dead. Uh, she's heard of some monsters that uh, feed upon the bones of holy men, so. <laughs> she, so she hung, she's hung around people. So, Rish and Lucilla, um, both of you notice that there is quite a bit of um, goblin footprints all around the mausoleum, mm-hmm. but you also notice that there are prints that seem to have been left by some other larger humanoid that is wearing um, actual boots. Mm. Um, if you would like to roll me a survival check to know more, I can let you know. Not my greatest one, but I will give it a shot. Anyone that you pointed out to can also... Um, yes, oh. boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. Boots and pants. So it pointed it out to... Um, Fix, um, she and Rish notice um, that um, count, like tracing the footprints, um, s- um, six goblin and one medium humanoid, uh, most likely human or some other variation of like elf, half elf, orc, nothing like dwarf or anything, mm-hmm. um, left um, over the wall to the back end of the boneyard. And entered and left the mausoleum. Oh, I explain. In and out. That is unusual. Did, did anybody else see goblins working alongside anybody else yesterday? Um, explain why they work so well together today or yesterday. True. Yeah, I didn't see anyone other than goblins. I killed a couple of them myself, and it was just goblins and their dogs. Well, this this feels a lot more nefarious than it initially did. Well, not sure how I feel about this, but all the more reason to cleanse this hallowed place. You feel like I'm on the scent of something. <laughs> just open up the door to, right away. <laughs> Oh, uh, you open the door? Yep. Go ahead and give me a strength check with your size. <laughs> That's fair. That's very fair. <laughs> like a super hard one, but... 18. Oh, shit. Yeah, um, nice. you open it, and as okay. you open it, um, th- the rest of you, she's too focused on this. You all witness this giant... That's not giant. This bony hand reach out and try to grab at her. Um, <laughs> so it's going to get a surprise attack on you, but let me go ahead and chain the map real quick. Get your nose into a lich ambush. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm a deus. What the hell are you doing here? He's like, oh, you know. I stop. Lock me. Be, find peace and quiet inside this mausoleum. <laughs> he said, I'm researching the rise of the Rune Lord JP. <laughs> but I've clearly been discovered, so I guess I'll just kill the entire town now. Circle of death. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing any of us could do to stop him. No. <laughs> So let me reveal this real quick. Imagine so I'd position yourselves however you would be. Largely around here. Yep. I'm where I would be. Actually, it'll probably be right next to her. Yeah, Manuel would be probably... So it's grabbed me, so this would be against my CMD or this my... Would be your flat... No, it's just... I, I flavored it as a grab, but it's going to be oh, a okay. slap attack. Gotcha. Um, so, so it's, a, it's your flat foot, basically. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yeah, that'll hit. So as it reaches out, like you're able to pull away, but it's like um, bony hand grasps at your arm and it tries to like rip at you. Like it pulls, like it, it's bony nails kind of pull and scrape at the skin. 
Um, then we're going to get into some initiative here. So. Yeah, three hit points. Oh, damn. Mm-hmm. You see, you have three hit points. <laughs> I have some... only eight total. Okay, I'm a level one bard. I'm some fast skeletons. I'm actually kind of like, wait a minute. Why is there an issue? Okay, no, that. Yeah. I have almost double your hit points. I have 15. Yeah, it's because I have a 10 in con, so it doesn't help. And then we have the wizard here who has almost as much HP as the barbarian. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I think everyone's on the turn order. Yeah, you created the fightiest wizard I've ever seen in Pathfinder. <laughs> um, so it's first like... ups are the skeletons. Yep. This one's going to go here and attack Afixa, and the other one's going to attack Lucilla. Um, I will say this is probably going to be flat-footed for Afixa, but since you were already attacked, um, I'm not going to give you flat-footed again. Yeah. Because now you're like, you're like, oh shit. Uh-huh. Also, you got hurt probably more than you've been hurt in a while. Yeah. See if I go down. Are we doing hero points in this, Richard? Um, only upon level up or if I issue them. Like I said before, yeah. if you guys think something like a joke or a, like a really cool p- moment is warranted a hero point, just speak your mind and I will give it consideration and most likely allow it. So, so we this all is have... also like so it's like a communal thing. If someone if you think like say Haldor does something really badass and you all think or one of you thinks that he should get a hero point for it, just speak up and let me know. Gotcha. And oftentimes, I probably will reward that. So, right now, we have zero. You have one right now. Okay. I'm not going to start you off with zero. You'll have one, because you, you still get him at level up. You get a free one, basically, when you level up. And typical Pathfinder hero point rules, not the tapping versus burning? Yeah. Okay. No, these aren't reusable. That's why I'm like saying, if something that cool happens, let me yeah. know and speak up, and then I'll reward more. And they only go to a maximum of three. Mm. So anyway. Sounds good. One more slam against Lucilla. Oof. Oof. Well, down I go. <laughs> oh. Good news is there's a cleric nearby. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> um, okay, so I cannot remember for the life of me how rolling for death saves works in Pathfinder. So if yeah, anyone remembers. Uh, con, or the DC is a Con roll, I believe, with a uh, ten plus your negative hit points. As the yes, DC. you a con, like a, or a fortitude save uh, in the DC's ten 13. plus plus negative HP. And you die once your negative HP equals your constitution. Yep. Yeah. So what's your negative right now? Uh, negative three. Okay. So DC thirteen. Con save. But I think that's on. I think that's on her turn. It is her turn. Yeah. Oh, okay. So stable. So, yep. yep. You're stabilized, so uh-huh. good news. Do you stabilize at negative three or at yes. yes? Okay. Yeah. Was a fix it attacked or just I, I I'm the, getting to that. I just forgot okay. to um Okay. I, I just one. My bad. Which misses you anyway, so Oh man, why couldn't I have gotten that wrong? <laughs> right. <laughs> Although what would your flat footed? Because this is this one is against your flat footed. Uh flat footed. Um Do I have my shield up or no? Like I imagine I'll allow your shield. Okay. Um, you were worried that someone was yeah. going to get here. Yeah. Okay. So my flat footed. That's I just give me a twenty for flat footed. That doesn't seem right. So. I mean, you could just. What's your dex? Dex is uh, sixteen. So uh, AC is fifteen. So it would only lower your AC by three, I think. So I think it's yeah. still miss. Yeah. So fifteen is my AC with. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. My flat foot is rank showing as twenty for some reason. <laughs> hmm. right. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So. Secret monk levels, I guess. <laughs> right. But it is your turn. Okay. Um. So she'll uh t- draw her uh, scimitar and take a swing at this guy. Should have no qualms about killing undead because Saren Ray. Nope. Absolutely not. No mercy. Uh. This one. Oh, oh, but that that's Saren Ray Worshipper doesn't get called enough. Wait, no. Anymore. That will miss, actually. Oh, damn. Sorry. I was looking at the HP. Anything else? Am I, able to, am I able to five foot step and uh, stand over Lucilia to kind of oh, uh, offer protection? 
So clear the way and also offer protection to her companion. No worries. Haldor, your new halfling friend just went down in a couple blows. I tripped and hit my head. Let's be honest. <laughs> I saw it. You had a stiff sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to come over here. And then I will power attack this one in front of me. So minus one attack, plus two damage, and let's fold in. That will miss. Mm -hmm. 18 to hit? Yeah. Wow. Wait, hold on. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say. Give me a second. I think I. With 18 AC? Damn. Everyone, run away! So this is this is, is Amadeus. No, no, this is I was wrong. Um, I wrote it down wrong when I was transcribing it in here. It's um, sixteen would hit. So fifteen. So Fix's did still miss, but yours does yeah. hit, and it completely just destroys the thing, even with um, damage resistance against anything slashing. My bad, guys. Bear with me. It's been a while since I've DM'd. No, it's no, no sweat. Well, I was starting to sweat a bit there if an eighteen was missing. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel. He would give combat advice to Fixa to keep her shield high and aim low as a move action. And then. Uh, yep, that's it. Our hero. Ish. <laughs> 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 It's a standard action. Yeah, I'll just move over and try and pull uh, Lucilla out away. Yeah, if you're using the action to do that, you can pull her away easily. And that would be back to the skeleton. Skelly man is going to slam the thing that's in front of him. Mm-hmm. It. Apparently, I'm saving all my better rolls for the non arm wrestling competition. <laughs> right. <laughs> This one just slams into you again. Mm-hmm. Well, Julie Mayne is still breathing. These skeletons could kill the entire town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, still, you're unconscious, not yep. dying. But stable. Okay, fix it. It's your turn. I'll uh, two up and fight uh, Scimitar and Light Shield. So, Scimitar first. There we go. And then. Oh, I don't know why it rolled the second one. So, 18 and just subtract uh, 2 for the offhand one. Okay, uh, second one misses. First one, you slice into it, but your blade doesn't seem to do anything to it. Mm. This is not good. And five foot step to clear away for Haldor. Yeah, just hold the door for Haldor. All right. <laughs> hold the Haldor! Haldor! <laughs> Still haven't seen that show, but I get the reference. Mm. Okay, power attacking this one. <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think this fix is going to hit. No, unfortunately not. How do you have a minus one to your attack roll? Power, yeah, power attack. attack. Oh, that's right. That's Level right. Level one. Right. <laughs> Emmanuel. Emmanuel will move to here. And he will take a shot at this little guy and say to a fixer to bash them next time. And if he hits, she'll get plus two to AC. Uh, where are our weapons? I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to these sheets. No worries. Okay, there we go. That will hit. This is piercing. So. It's... Um... You actually hit it right against the skull, but the skull pops off and the skeleton wobbles for a minute, but it's still standing. Oh, dear me. Reach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll throw an acid splash on it. That's against touch, right? Yep. Probably won't hit because the think skeletons are dex based. Yeah, it doesn't hit. <sighs> Flies off into the dark and sizzles away. <laughs> Pass this way. It's going to 
You know, the one... Let's see. No, it's going to attack a fix it, because you're the one that hit it last. Okay. It's not It's not an intelligent creature. That works. Oof. Its arm pops off as it tries to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, well, it has no head, so... Blocks yep. of the shield, and the arm just... Thunk, thunk. <laughs> Still is unconscious. I fix it. Now's my chance. He's been disarmed. Uh -huh. That was a terrible joke. <laughs> Five foot step. Uh, did you give me a bonus to attack, or was that just to AC? That was to AC. Okay. Light shield attack. And I still can't hit. Nope, unfortunately not. Oh my god, it's like if you res the bard, you could get buffs. <laughs> right. I don't think anyone has healing except for you. Not yet. Next level. Uh, Aldor. Yeah. <laughs> and with another power attack. Go for it. There oh we yeah. Go. Doesn't confirm, but you just slice the bones down the middle and it like makes a piano sound. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Tickle in the ivories. Yeah, and just like that, we're out of initiative. Um, the, so. um, Father Xantus does come running. Mm. Ancestors attack smooth skins often. Not as often as you'd think. But... Um, he can't spare one cure wounds. Watch him get a two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, that's why we lock four, him in big so. vaults. You never know when they'll <laughs> just come back up and Hey, that puts me back to full. Not quite up to full, because you're at minus three, but... All oh, right, right. Still good. You're still almost a full. Mm. When I regain consciousness, I just immediately go, I knew it! Huh? Oh. Took a tumble there. I knew it, though. Knew what? Knew it. I'm dead, right? Skeleton. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, next time you know that, maybe let Haldor go in first. If you may know, I'll get surprised so badly. Mm. Well, I'm not exactly experienced at this. Starts getting up and dusting self off. You know, what's the fun of not living a little dangerously? Living? Around this time, Belor and Father Xantis are um, beside the door as well. Like, is there anything else inside? Or should there be anything that we need to alert the town folk of? Could do a quick search. Looks like there's two, two open sarcophagi. Let's check these. He fix will kind of just knock gently on this one. See if there's any sound from the other side. Um, there's not. Uh, if you want to go ahead and roll me a perception as you're looking around. Oh yeah. She just jumps up after she almost died, and she's like, "Time to look." Yeah, halflings are described as generally quite fearless, so yep. this is how I interpret that. <laughs> now, now that I'm rested after that nap. Listen, that, it, just, it just scratched up my face a little bit. I fell backwards, <laughs> hit the back of my head on a rock, took a tiny nap. I'm up. I'm good. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind the um, concussion. All those surging rushes explaining how the tracks show that larger boss is commanding Melkak. Um, so looking around, um, one of the um, open sarcophagus um, has a very decayed body. Um, the other one, whatever remains were in there, is completely gone. And beside the um, coffin is a faintly like grayish robe. Hmm. Any kind of like markings on the robe, like a crest or something? There are some arcane sigils on there. Anything I can roll to identify it? Uh, Spellcraft. Spellcraft. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Not my best, but not my worst. 19. Okay. Um, so the spells that were held inside this robe are expended. Mm -hmm. So it's only a faint re residual magic you detect. But this was once a robe of bones. It used to have patches on it you could use to throw out, and it would basically the patches would become skeletons. <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, I stand up with a rub. Okay, so, good news, bad news. Yes. Good, new good news is, uh, these skeletons probably aren't anyone that any of you ever knew or who were buried here. That's very good to hear. 
bad that news is seemed likely either way. Someone uh, left them here as a trap intentionally. Um, when you mention that all that, um, Father Xanthus does uh, squeeze his way through everybody and looks at the room and looks at the sarcophagus that um, is missing the body mm-hmm. and does one of those like audible gasps out of like a movie. Ooh, that's a good sign. He's like, that, <laughs> that was Father Ezekiel. He. He was the former head priest of um, Desna that ran the temple before I, and he died in the fire years ago. Back mm-hmm. in the when the original cathedral was built, or I mean, around. Why would why would goblins want his body? Not goblin, boss. Yes. Why would a goblin's boss want? I, uh... Looked like a human or elf tracks were accompanied by. Goblin, so looks like we might be dealing with a cult on our hands, Father. Goblin just eat body, but boss might want something more. I I I elbow, I guess Haldor's kneecap. Uh, <laughs> oh my trick knee! <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> um, Lucilia says, "Hey, Haldor, Haldor, do you feel that?" It's the plot thickening. <laughs> this type of soup? <laughs> All I felt was you nudge my kneecap. But I mean, I mean, come on, you you you, you guys are seeing this, right? Uh the, the the bones of a priest who burned to death in a mysterious fire of the last church, and then it was broken into and stolen by some sort of mysterious person. Who buried a cloak that could summon undead? Ooh, at this this has conspiracy. Same, all is written over it. At the same time, the festival celebrating the new church construction. So yeah, no, I, I see it. This isn't going to ruin the hunting trip, is it? Um, Sheriff Hemlock is kind of like been oh, like kind of taking all this in as you guys have been talking. Like it seems like the goblin raid was more of a distraction than the actual threat. Uh, Nogak have boss. They far more threat now. Yes. Um, if you could, I'd advise you all to keep this to yourselves for now. The townsfolk, it won't do to get them in a panic over something that may or may not be happening at the moment. We're gonna. I have some contacts I can make that I might be able to introduce to you in a couple days that might be able to shed some more light on this whole ordeal. Um, She's this um, traveler that comes in town from time to time. I know she's in the area. She knows everything about the goblins of the vicinity, the area. So, I'd advise you to at least uh, tell your town's guardsmen because uh, if they go into this expecting regular just goblin ambushes, and this it, is fair. Just, just a bit of my recommendation. No, this is fair. I just don't want every. Baker and their daughter to know that there might be someone who's using the goblin to attack the village for nefarious purposes without them not causing a panic. My lips will be sealed. Not a word shall be spoken. Uh, Any chance I can keep you all on as retainers for the next week or so as if we need an emergency help of any kind? I have your reward for now, and I could offer you more in the future. Um, he pulls out this bag. He's like, um, the the mayor and I was able to, were able to accumulate this from past funds that we were going to use for the festival, but we don't need it any longer. And he tosses um, f- fix a bag of a hundred gold pieces. Oh. Fix a look to uh, can't remember Father who Xantus. Father Xantus and say, uh, would you prefer me helping around? The cathedral, or should I help our new friends here do what needs done? I believe it's time for you to find what you want to do with your place in the world. Um, as much as you're a great and faithful priestess of the cathedral, you, you felt antsy in the last couple of times that I've spoke with you. You seemed very gung ho to um, how I'm, like, I'm trying to think of how you would word it. Mm-hmm. Um, enjoying the festivities and the fact that you know this bad thing happened and you seem to rise to the occasion 
seemed to speak that there might be more for you rather than just sitting in a cathedral for the rest of your life. So maybe do this and you can figure out um, maybe if there's a calling for you otherwise. Dude. The gods work in mysterious ways, after all. Do you seem excited at that notion, but try to, you know, mask it as quickly as you can say that I appreciate your understanding, Father, and I will do the best I can for for our city. Of course. May the goddess of travels go with you wherever you may go. Um, I am going to speak with the other acolytes about what has transpired. Um, they are not prone to musings of rumors, so I can at least keep them informed. If you um, wish of any kind of healing that we might perform, we'll probably not have it available for the next couple of days, but in the future I can offer anything we can cast free of charge for the lot of you. Um, though if anything you want to buy in terms of potions, um, I will have to charge you as the materials to make them do not come cheap. I understand. Um, might not hurt to use some of this to buy one as an emergency for the group. What what say you and do you look at the rest of the group? Always willing help for shine stones. Yes. Make easy. <laughs> what he said? <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you the basically the cathedral's wares. Mm-hmm. Should you wish to buy anything? Mm-hmm. I think uh, use 50 of the coins we just got to buy one potion and cure light wounds, you think? Yeah. And then everybody else gets 10? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Who wants to carry the potion? Although we've got a scroll of cure light wounds at 25 gold pieces. Um, I've got some. I got some spare gold, and I can cast cure light wounds, so I'll buy that scroll. Okay. You're gonna buy one of the cure light wound scrolls? Yeah. Because I got 56 gold, so okay. I can I can pick up one pretty easily. Scrolls are nice and cheap. You just gotta be able to cast as the spell or yeah. UMD. Yep. And I and I actually have as a part of my spell list that I <laughs> no, so it seemed like a slam dunk. I'm not sure if it'll come up, but if you if anyone ever has to use use magic device, if it fails, it doesn't burn through the scroll unless you roll a d20 and roll a one on it. Yeah, hmm. that's fair. That's good to know. That's cool. So if no, so if you have a scroll that you think might come in handy and you need to use it in the pinch, mm-hmm. but it fails, it doesn't automatically burn the scroll. But after that, if you roll a d20 and you get a one, then it does. So there's still a little bit of risk involved, but not like oh my god, I failed to use the scroll; it's gone forever. <laughs> right. So, did we pick up one Cure Light Wounds potion? Yeah, one I scroll. think that's good since, you know, Lucilia, yeah. she could, if she goes down, then I don't think we have a means to get her back up. Exactly. And if Fix will say, you're pretty good at giving instructions from the back line, would you like to hold on to the potion to, so the front line doesn't have to fall back to offer aid to whoever goes down? Mm, indeed, I think that's a good notion. So I'll add that to my inventory. Everybody else will get 10 gold pieces. Uh, uh, I think the only one's health chained is yeah. Affixa and Lucilla. Uh, I'm going to bring you back to the um, yes, map. Okay. Um, so when I put your tokens in there, it, it might need some changing. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I can't link that. I was going to link my token to my character sheet, but I cannot. Because I am a yeah. player. Let me see if I can. It says represents your character. Um, that the if you bars to, need to be linked. If you go over to the green bar, uh, you can... It's on HP. Drop... Yeah, it okay. should be linked. I thought we'd already... Or... Yeah, because... I know mine's linked up, but... Mine... It says HP and AC. Should it be something else? Uh, current HP, maybe? Because it it's showing my max, but it's not showing my... Uh... HP... Because on my sheet it says six hit points. Mm-hmm. So check under attributes. There we go. HP base. There yeah. we go. Now it's good. Messy mono me. I'll change everyone's like later on, but for now, mm-hmm. I just know what I have to do. It's weird. Um, so until the boar hunt, which happens later in the evening, 
Um, you're all free for the rest of the day if you wish to go about town, see if any shopping of any kind or anything else you wish to do. Um, Emmanuel would look for a uh, guy who kind of sponsored us last night. Ask mm-hmm. around to see where he might be found or where he normally does business. Um, you're talking about Aldern? Yes. Um, it would be quick to find out that um, he is staying at the Rusty Dragon as he doesn't actually live in town. He's just he has um, residence nearby, and he kind of goes back and forth between here and Magnor. Gotcha. And if he can catch him, or do you want me to wait, or go ahead and tell what um, You're going is. first. We can go ahead and do what you want to do first real quick. All right. He, he'd look, him, uh, look for him, and if he can catch him, um, discuss uh, trade, and he had all those capitalistic stories the other day, and uh, Emmanuel would boast about Malthoon and how they've, you know, newly cemented their position and they're looking for trade partners. If he is looking to uh, send goods further in order to uh, diversify, that he can put him in touch with his father. He's like, that's good to hear. Um, he seems very interested in it and he starts, he, he talks with you a little bit about the trade. He seems to like, He's an opportunistic trader where he'll buy um, product that people are selling for lower prices and Mm -hmm. go and sell them to other people Mm -hmm. um, that need them more but are usually harder to sell to. And so Emmanuel would give him a a list of items that are very rare but sought after there that might be common over here. Um, He in turn, as since you're so accommodating for this, he would also give you... um, he would a uh, parchment of um, a list of a few names for uh, merchants in Magnamar that might be open to trade with that location with Malthoon. Um, as well, some he might he thinks might already be trading with him, but a little bit of schmoozing never hurts anybody. He kind of adds. Indeed, it's good to take out the clientele. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of back and forth of like. I'm not going to get into the talk of merchants versus no. other merchants. No, stuff. dear God, please don't. But it's a lot of that. Okay. So that'll be probably what you're doing until the actual hunt. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, Fix will go to Lucilia and say, well, looks like we have a mystery on our hands. Do we want to skulk around the cemetery and see if we can find any more clues? See where the footprints go? Mm, that sounds like a good idea. I don't suppose that cathedral there has like a library or something. Uh, I don't, out of character, would it? Um, it doesn't have a very expansive library. Mm. Um, go ahead and give me a knowledge local. I'll give you a plus four since you actually are a local of the town. Alright. I would laugh if then I correct her on facts. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, natural 20. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you knew, you know a couple of different places you can... Um, of in terms of books, um, one of them is um, a local um, historian by the name of Broderick Quink um, has a house at number eight on the map. Mm-hmm. It was over here by Old Light. Gotcha. Um, there is um, the House of Blue Stones. It is a um, house over here, nineteen. It is um, a almost. It's a library that is um, run by a worshiper of Irori. That is a tra- we used to be a wandering monk. Mm-hmm. And then there's one more. Let me see real quick. There is a um, actual bookstore known as the Curious Goblin. That is number twenty two on the map. Gotcha. Who is run by a very eccentric 70-year-old man. So I'll look for a magic store while they're on that, if there's a list or anything. It, it's um, up to uh, fix the, how much she shares. with the No, she, she'd you know, be glad to tell about where all the books can be bought, because she's probably done her fair share of uh, perusing. Okay. Well, after we look around the grave here at some, I think I'm going to go to that monk see if i can't dig up any uh history about this place every good expedition starts in the library so 
put in some research first. <laughs> well, technically, this expedition started in the streets, but I see where you're going at. Yay, more library RP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Library RP. <laughs> Didn't take long. Woo! <laughs> um, you said, um, Kenneth, you were asking about a magic shop? Yeah. yeah give me one second. I can um, promise you guys one thing. When we play Skull and Shackles, there will be no library RP. <laughs> I don't think there's a single library in that g- geographical region. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, wall-to-wall pirates. Most of them don't read. <laughs> so before we get to Lucilla and Fix's adventures, mm-hmm. um, Rish, you do find the feathered serpent that you saw the first day. Um, it is a very cramped and cluttered shop that has this, a strange mixture of incense, spice, and dust smell <laughs> um, run by a, um, a, um, a bronze-skinned... Um, Long red haired man. I don't really have a voice for him, but he's very eccentric sounding. Um, we'll go ahead and show you the wares. Cloudy well, kids. Um, these are anything magical he has in stock. A little bit out of your price range at the moment, most of it, but. He does try to hawk a bunch of wind up toys at you as he calls them his specialty. Yeah, so. Back them for now, I'd imagine. Before we get to Haldor for a fix and Lucilla, you're looking, you're trying to follow the tracks essentially. Yes. Go ahead and give me another survival. Yeah, not great, but I'll do it. 14. Okay. Um, they do eventually go over the actual gate wall this way. Um, if you were to go around and go outside and follow them a little bit. Um, they eventually do get kind of lost in the forest debris to where it's hard. It, it's, it becomes near impossible to track them with all the other goblins that were sneaking into the, the city itself. I don't think um, we'd go too far. Probably yeah, you wouldn't. I didn't, inside the wall. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think you'd go too far. That's why I'm saying. Like, yeah. eventually they get kind of. Though you do notice that the, um, the amount of footprints aren't balanced for the amount of goblins you saw in town that night, so they might have come from another direction as well. But that's as much as you can kind of piece together as you're um, investigating that that route. Looks like we came across a dead end this time, but you said you wanted to go to uh, one of the bookshops? Yes, I forgot the name of whatever the 19 one was. Yeah, that one was the um, House of Blue Stones. Mm-hmm. Um... So you arrive, The it is a monastery. Um, it's tended by a dark-skinned woman who wears flowing blue robes with white trim. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's like, hello, how may I help? Oh, you're like, and she she does recognize Fixa and mm-hmm. introduces herself to Lucilla as um, Sable Sorn. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, how can I help you today? This is um, an unexpected but not unwelcome visit. How'd you do? Name's uh, Celia Dalyard. I was wondering if perhaps I could peruse your collection of tomes. I heard that you have quite a collection here. and There's some questions I wanted to see if maybe they were written down somewhere. Uh, go ahead and roll me a diplomacy. Absolutely. Yards. Uh, I'm I'm sorry to say I don't really know you well enough. I have a very uh, a lot of ancient tomes. I, I could vouch for her. Uh, she was helpful in fending off these uh, the goblin attacks, and she is very respectful in, of knowledge. And I am quite sure your books will be in good hands. Um, you go ahead and roll me a diplomacy as well. Mm, I suppose I can allow it this time. Um, I will accompany you during your research. Again, many of my scrolls and books here are very old. And I, I, as much as I believe you, Fix, about how she would treat him with respect, I just want to err on the side of caution. Oh, absolutely. Is that, is that acceptable, Miss? And she kind of like looks down at Lucilla. Dow Yard. It's totally fine. I, I've got family that work in academia, so I, I understand how to handle with care. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, as far as the library goes, it gives you a plus four 
on any knowledge history or knowledge planes. Cool. Before we get into anything you're looking up real quick. Yep, no problem. Haldor, what are you doing? Did you tell us where a blacksmith was? Um, I didn't, but it's pretty easy to um, ask around. Um, I'm not even going to have you have to roll like diplomacy or anything to find out where it is. Um, people are, um, recognize you. Um, you're a lot bigger than a lot of the people here, so it's, you stick out like a sore thumb. Mm-hmm. Um, they direct you to it's number 15 on the map. They're like, um, Red Dog Smithy over there. Old Daz Corvette um, runs it. Um, he has a bit of a temper, though, so if you're looking just to buy, uh, we could recommend the, um, the merchant that sells a lot of his goods um, at the armory. Yeah, uh, we'd but, head over to the armory then. Uh, that'd be number 12. That's um, Sava's armory. Inside is a um, human woman wearing um, some medium-sized like um, metal armor. Seems it, it doesn't. It, it has its own wear and tear, but it seems like she's largely wearing it for um, aesthetic purposes at the moment, where a lot of pieces are been removed for comfort rather than practicality at the moment. Mm-hmm. And she introduces herself and is like, what are you, are you in the market for anything I can help you with? Um, I, re- I recognize you from the group before. I can offer you a 20% discount. Um, largely any kind of mundane weaponry you, she has available. Um, she has a, a magical um, repeating crossbow behind the counter that she kind of shows off for a moment. As well as the masterwork, long swords, daggers, a spiked chain, and a bunch of shurikens. that are all um, very nice quality. I'm in the market for a blunt weapon. Um, two handed, uh, one handed. I have, a, and she kind of like starts like walking you through the store. Um, yeah, any mundane weaponry that isn't masterwork, you could buy here. Okay, I'd probably just go with a great club then. Yeah, easy enough to do. Um, yeah. it'll be, I'm not sure what the price on it is, but again, 20% off of whatever you buy. So. She hands you a 2x4. Yes, basically. It's five gold pieces. <laughs> I have this great club here. It says a magical word on it, but it's not actually magical. It says baseball. Hmm. <laughs> it says baseball. Baseball. It's an ancient, uh, what's the sunken like society? Thessalonian. Thessalonian, yeah. It's an ancient Thessalonian test. <laughs> From the legendary land of Loisvier. Basseboul. Right across the road of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. It was a very popular sport until they had some sort of issue with juice. I don't know what that's about. And if I get a 20% discount, that looks like I'm paying one gold piece for it. Yeah. And the damn designated hitter. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. That was one of my favorite jokes from Fallout 4, by the way. When you re- go to the merchant that sells just baseball bats, and he calls them swatters, and he tries to describe to your character what baseball was like. Um, <laughs> and he's like, well, what it is, is they would go out onto the field... And they would wield these clubs, and they would try to beat the other team to death with them. And see, then you could get these trading cards that had the number of kills they had on it. Um, Kenneth, to answer your question about the scrolls, um, mm-hmm. he would direct you to the bookstore, and inside uh, there, um, they have a couple scrolls. They do have um, Unseen Servant. They do have the floating disc one, and they have a scroll of mirror image, but those are the only three they have. Yeah. That's good. Let's see. Now the question is, which one I can buy? <laughs> scroll mm. of mirror image is 150, so I'm not sure if you have yeah, money for that. Yeah, that's higher level. So. Now, yeah. that should help if I need to kill some more undead. <laughs> To uh, tell them the age old, what is that trick, and then grab the scroll and run. <laughs> um, so, Haldor, um, after you leave the um, armory, um, there is a red haired woman approaching you. 
Um, she kind of waves you down. She, um, she's just dressed like the a normal um, townsfolk person. Um, God, I can't word word right sometimes. Um, <laughs> and she's like, um, "Hi, I saw you in action last night. I can't can't help but notice how swiftly you handled all those goblins." Uh, it wasn't much of a challenge. They're just little folks. Um, I don't suppose you could help me with a problem I've been having back at um, my father's place of business. We're having a large rat problem. Shouldn't be too much of an issue, but I don't trust myself to go down there and deal with it myself. Watch out for them rodents of unusual size. <laughs> Cuts to just the door rattling. You just hear Micken, let me out! <laughs> <laughs> How large of rats are we talking about? Oh, like, and she kind of, like, holds the size of, like, a uh, poodle size, like a miniature poodle size. Like, nothing, like, giant that's going to, like, terrorize the town, but just something I don't really trust myself to deal with. I'm just a poor, defenseless um, little girl. Like, she is, like, she's, like, 20 years old. She says little girl, but she's doing that thing where she's trying to be flirty. Even Haldor would be able to tell. Mm-hmm. There you go. I, I I guess I can go and help you with your rat problem. And she's like, excellent. And she tries to like, like she kind of grabs your arm and kind of leads you um, out towards, um, which you would say the sign on the front that is a um, um, real quick. Gener- hmm? I'm gonna do a sense motive. Yeah. Um, she just seems to want your help. All right. Um, but she leads you back to the. <laughs> To the general store, actually. Um, It's number 26 on the map. Which is... As you walk in, you see that their cleanliness rating is a 12. Um, The the house itself was locked, but she unlocks it with um, her own keys and um, takes you down to um, the cellar. She's like, they're just there behind the um, caskets over there. Uh, Yeah, he'd he'd go over and very uh, helpfully try to look for those rats um there are you don't see any rats and yeah, when you turn ar- when you turn around her bodice is open anyway flashing back to gombo and Loki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had a feeling it was a, a dtf moment um so what are you two researching uh, I'm inquiring about if they have any texts on the history of Sandpoint, uh, anything about uh, old religions that exist within the area, and possibly if she has anything in original, hopefully I can pronounce this right, uh, Thessalonian? Thessalonian. Thessalonian. I've said it so many times in this past year that yeah. I can actually say it without fucking it up anymore. Thessalonian, thank you. Master no GM. worries. Um... Go ahead and roll me a history. You'll get a plus four to it. All right. This should be a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a pretty I good one. I don't know if it makes a difference, but uh, uh, Fix will be largely assisting her. Yeah, go so. ahead and roll a history yourself. And yeah, as long as you get a 10, you can give a plus two. Nope. nope. <laughs> you get fascinated by a picture book. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, you actually find a book that's like talking about the um, anatomy of dragons, and you don't understand any of it, but you're really fascinated by the depictions of these dragons. <laughs> um, so for Lucilla, um, in terms of the history of Sandpoint and like gods and everything, mm-hmm. in addition to... like Sandpoint itself is actually a relatively new town, mm-hmm. and that it ha- it's only been around for about... Um, 60 or 70 years, I believe. Right. Don't quote me on the exact number, but it's around there. It's definitely less than 100. Mm. Though, any kind of religious thing that was more obtuse in terms of worship happened actually within the last five years. Mm-hmm. In the last five years, they had um, what was known as the Chopper Massacre as a serial killer had... Um, been prowling the town, killing civilians. 
Um, he was eventually caught, and it turned out he was a well-respected member of the of the town that was a wood carver that carved um, birds into the sides of many houses mm-hmm. um, to the point where everyone was always trying to get him to carve something in their house because it was such a sought after commodity of the town. Mm-hmm. Turns out after he killed the last sheriff and Bellor and some other guards tracked him down to what is now known as Chopper's Isle. Um, that he had a shrine to Pazuzu Ah. Um, there the um was decorated with all kinds of different pieces of um, the bodies that he of the uh, people he killed, as well as his own eyes that when they had arrived he had plucked out and put on the altar before he died. I see. Uh, can I roll a side knowledge religion to see if I uh know anything about Pazuzu? I mean, it's a bad thing I'm able to collect from this context, but out of character, I know some stuff. But I don't want to in character. Go ahead and roll that religion. Fourteen. Yeah, library RP. <laughs> you basically know that he is a um, demon lord slash god. Mm-hmm. Um, very evil. Um, though he does have some. Um, in fighting with Flamash too. Gotcha. You don't really know a lot of the deeper knowledge of the re- religion itself, mm-hmm. except that it is a cult and it is evil. Good to know. Okay. Um. Uh, my, Lamash too is the mother of monsters one, right? Or am I thinking of the Lamash too is the mother of monsters one? Gotcha. Cool. Cool. I know that's one of the big gods, so it's most more likely that... Yeah, I, with the 14 would... that you just rolled, you would easily know that what she is and everything. Yeah. She's considered one of the big evil gods. Yep, yep. Pazuzu uh, is basically her nemesis slash, um, like, rival. Uh-huh. Is that the one that Cope was trying to ease in? Yes. <laughs> Lamash, too, is the one he was trying to ease in, too. <laughs> yep. Just, just ah. give them a little bit of the mother of monsters. Oh, blah, dee, oh, blah, da. <laughs> uh, but that's about as much as you would be able to learn through the day. Okay. No, um, no text in the Thessalian unrelated uh, just out of curiosity. There's some, but it, it's mostly just like historical value. It doesn't actually dictate anything about the area. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of it's just like. Um, Knowing the language, you know that it basically just translates to grocery lists or um, declarations from the old rune lords of, uh, back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing that really pertains to now, or nothing that really makes sense other than the actual words. Yeah, it seems to be. It's kind of like when you see people studying ancient languages and they find mm-hmm. an old tablet, but it turns out to just be basically hate mail. Yeah. <laughs> That that's still good because uh, according to the trait, it's a mostly dead language, and to, I I only know it because I was able to piece together how to read it from other texts. So this is just testing my theories, basically. Yeah, more or less. It, I basically my character did the equivalent of reverse engineering how to read Latin. <laughs> you. Yep. Anyway, back to Haldor. Yeah. Um, Haldor, how do you respond to the woman with her body? Meanwhile, you? meanwhile, at the sexual harassment already in progress. <laughs> yeah, how does Haldor react to this whole um, instance? I mean, is he receptive to it? I think, I think I think he's pretty receptive. Okay, so I'm going to have you roll with a minus four in your perception. Did all those years of playing 40k teach you nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad, I promise. <laughs> I succubus know. status. You're gonna yeah, throw a succubus at first nothing level. Is, it's not a nothing succubus. is Warhammer 40k bad. Yeah. In this bad. setting. Um. Just perce- go ahead and roll a perception, and we'll you said perception at a minus four. Yeah. Because you're in the middle of some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're a keen warrior. You're even in the middle of some fierce battling of your own kind. 
Um, you do hear the door of the um, cellar opening up. And you begin to hear footsteps stepping down. Oh, shotgun wedding time. Um, uh... You're in the middle of practically being on top of this woman, by the way, behind these barrels. So, do you react of <laughs> any kind, or are you kind of just freeze up? Uh, yeah, things are just freezing up. I'm not exactly going to hide. Yeah. Minus two stealth. <laughs> Behind barrels. Um, hey, you don't have an armor penalty. You're all. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. You don't have any armor on. <laughs> the greatest use of that mechanic. <laughs> You're right. I think technically my stealth would actually be a plus two. <laughs> um, as stepping down into this room is this um, slightly rotund older man. He like squints for a second because it is pretty dark in here. Before he sees you, he's like, "What are you doing in my house?" Um, and then from beha- beneath you, you hear, D- Daddy? Oh, God. And As, he's dashing. Yeah, um, he is going to scream and lunge at you. So let's go ahead and go to this map. And start some <laughs> initiative. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> We're just going to show up for this hunt. And I'm like, so I found some <laughs> really interesting stuff on serial killers and demon cults. How I'm, I'm, not, I'm not wearing I'm not wearing my armor, so Haldor suddenly turns movement. towards the girl and says, "Wait a minute! How old did you say you were?" <laughs> she said she was eighteen. Okay, Shaylis is not going to act out anything, which that's her name since Haldor never did get it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> oh, oh, he was getting it. <laughs> he was getting it. Haldor attacks with the, with his long sword. Let's just sword. say I didn't catch her name, but I can <laughs> confirm she knew mine. Okay, I am going to give you a hero point for long sword. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good one, I have to admit. So Haldor, you're up first. And this guy just clenches his fists and looks like he's about to leap at you. It will take an action to pick up your um, gear if you want to escape with it. Okay, okay. No, I want him to show up to the hunt just like in a burlap sack with no explanation. <laughs> Wish there was a way to cancel the movement. Can you cancel the like a movement after you've made it? Try hitting escape key. Oh yeah, there you go. Right there. Okay. He's, He's going to, to her. step over here, <laughs> um, and he is going to swing at you. Oh, yep. And that would hit for six non-lethal damage as he Man. just lunges with all his, all his strength and just socks you across the face. He is a strong, strong dad. I mean, granted, um, you've used it enough times. You know he is power attacking. Mm. Oh, fair, fair. But it would be back to your turn. And 80 more feet. Up he is, he is uh, gonna tr- are you withdrawing? Because he is going to try to swing at you for an AOO. Uh, yeah, I, I'm probably withdrawing, yeah. Okay. No, I like to ask you, did Halder grab his, like, armor and stuff, or is that all just... Yeah, he, he took an action to do it and only moved okay. half, like, 40 feet. I gotcha. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think I missed that part, because that would have been hilarious. No, I, I, as you I mean, take he off... is running into the street naked either way. <laughs> um, as you're running, you just hear, like, Daddy, it's fine, he was just helping me look for rats. <laughs> As the door slams behind you as you are in the street, not naked, but definitely not in your armor. <laughs> Library RP. <laughs> <laughs> now, curiously, um, was that written into the AP? It was. Nice. It said to go for anyone who considers themselves a ladies' man or high charismatic. Oh, and Haldor's <laughs> backstory said he was a bit of a ladies' man. Oh, there you go. So I'm like, oh, I gotta go with Michael there. <laughs> library RP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, library RP does end successfully. Mm-hmm. Reesh got himself a fancy new spell. Mm-hmm. Emmanuel enjoyed a nice um, business chat. And I got myself a fancy new STI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Haldor uh, performed a withdraw action. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely pulled out of that. And then back in, and then withdrawal. (laughs) Uh, I was just thinking how to phrase the pull out joke. Yeah. (laughs) 
Um, so, out of curiosity, uh, when the sun starts going down and Lucilia thinks that they should leave to go to the hunt, uh, how many pages has Fix gotten through of the one book? She'd probably still be on the same book. <laughs> no, that no, I mean, how many pages one. in yeah. the... <laughs> so you're still on, like, page two? Just flipping through, just... Yeah, she, she wouldn't be, just... like, on one page. <laughs> just... Look at the detail. <laughs> <laughs> right? The artistry. It's like... Lucy is about um, gonna get her attention. It's like she raises the book she was reading to just lightly bop her on the head and then remembers it's an ancient tome and gently puts it back on the shelf and takes her journal and just gives a light thunk on the back of Fix's head. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, oh, so, <clears throat> closes the book and sets it aside. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's <clears throat> the second page. Uh, depends on how you're holding the book. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, put, put the hand on Fix's shoulder. I like you, so I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. I think we need to get to the hunting if uh, we're going to make it on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I thank the, the nice lady for letting us use the library. Um, if you come across any ancient tomes, I'm happy to take them off your hands. I'll keep that I'm in sure mind. Lucilla is taken aback by that comment. Well, I'm I'm not Amadeus. I believe knowledge should be shared. It belongs in a library, though. Oh wait, technically, was is this a library? It technically is or, a library, but it's a private library. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm was, more Indiana Jones. It belongs in a museum type of person. Yeah, it <laughs> so. sounds like Lucilla's <laughs> more into the adventure of finding it. Mm. Yeah. So you make your way back to the um, tavern uh, or the. Um, in um, uh, Emmanuel, Hannah. are you taking your snake? Yes, he would uh, bring whatever the guy's name is. Um, you know, delighting him in stories and, and salesmanship of talking about trade and economics. And let me show you about the wonderful riding snakes that uh, we produce in our land. And it's an art we've learned from a, a faraway country, and, and takes him there, gets the stable guy to get out the snake and yep. and then he um the, the group of you together also get out the horses um they get Haldor's war trained horse outfitted when you all arrive um there's a manual on, a, on his snake um um Ald, Aldern is on a solid white horse um Haldor you can recognize yours immediately as it's the only one that's not even a little spooked from the snake um it is a jet black horse with a a gray mane, and it's outfitted with all kind like all kinds of war train saddle and everything. Um, I think so. You have like one of those modded um, kind of horses that's a bunch of different colors, mm-hmm. and so you have what is basically a pony. Yep, just a pony. <laughs> um, it's, just a solid, it's a normal brown pony. Mm-hmm. Little Sebastian. Little Sebastian. Rish? Oh, little um. Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Rish does have a horse. It is, um... It does look, like, um, pretty similar to Lucilla's, only it is, you know, an, a full-sized horse. Uh-huh. Um... Rish comes it in is, riding on a giant lizard. <laughs> it is the most spooked of all of them, because as you approach Rish's hand of the reins... And it is not used to any kind of reptilian creatures. But it's sure. trained enough to where you're able to mount it without any kind of like spooking or knocking off. Trying so hard to resist uh, from the lizard riding snake. <laughs> I would like to say that on the walk over here, Celia very enthusiastically described serial killers and demon cults too. <laughs> fix the entire way over. Mm. Um, while he's de- well, she's describing this. I fix it. It's almost like you have flashbacks of the people that would come into the um, old cathedral before it burnt down, complaining of all these murders and stuff. Because you were around during the time, mm-hmm. you were a young child, but you remember clearly the like scarred, like almost like um, shell shocked faces of a lot of the townsfolk during that time. So like when she's tr- like when she's talking about it, you have like that thousand yard stare. Mm. A few times, she's like yeah, no, I remember that. 
Right, because you're probably around during that time. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting because apparently out on the island there was a shrine to Pazuzu that might be connected to what we're doing. Mm, that With sounds grape- like it'll make for a very messy business. Hopefully we could prevent history from trying to repeat itself. Guys, um, I'm pretty sure that's Emmanuel's last name. <laughs> Pazuzu. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but as you all arrive, she's like, mm-hmm. if it isn't my favorite ladies, and oh, Haldor, you're here too. Um, as um, Aldern kind of like saunters up to you on the horse. Um, Everyone rolls you can clearly tell Haldor. this horse is his as it's doing that like galloping like trot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that. Like in pace. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, come. Our, our prey, our quarry awaits. Um, we have to go catch dinner. And um, as you all make your way towards the horses, um, Haldor, um, the um, owner of the stables, hands it to you. He's like, well, I didn't think I'd be giving it to anyone else, but um, you seem suited, as suited to this beast as your sister was. Um, this thing won't go down the fight easy, and it is not spooked by nothing. I made sure of it. Do, do we have hunting spears, or what, what are we using to hunt the boar? Uh, I'm afraid that when we get deeper into the Tickwood, we're probably going to have to go by foot and leave our um, mounts behind, I'm afraid. Right, but I might be mistaken, but I thought typically when you hunt boar, you typically stick with spears or other reach weapons to so you don't get too close to the biz end of the Oh, we'll make, it up on, we'll make it up as we go. Yeah! And he just starts going off. I, I look at a fix up, <laughs> we'll use our hands, and then I go after <laughs> You see Emmanuel point his lance into the air and say, Onward! By the way, do you all wonder how the forest got its name, the Tickwood? Just I so guess. you know. Mm. Spears um, are a fishing tool. I used all. So he does lead you outside the town going north. I'm going to go ahead and take you to another map real quick. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that is not what I expected. Mm-hmm. He takes you out. It's about um, a mile and a half ride up to the Tickwood Forest. Um, it's just north of the Devil's Platter, which is a big um, limestone encartment um, that kind of looms above. Um, he's like, despite his name, it is relatively safe here. The, the ticks are small and generally don't bother anyone going in. It's just kind of spot them on the deer and the cougars and stuff that uh, happenstance around. And yes, there are occasional rare giant ticks, but eh, we're doubt, I doubt we're going to run into any of those. Just watch out for the dire ticks. That's that's the one that will mess you up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the ride takes about a half an hour. Um, Haldern kind of strikes up his, com- his normal conversation. Um, um, Emmanuel's heard it before, but he like starts talking about how he he almost won a, a um, fresh off the um, run, the run of new golems being manufactured in Magnamar, but he got one die wrong in his bet and um, almost lost his shirt. But he was this close, and just kind of stories around that kind of thing. Uh, if I may, can I roll a performance oratory to do that thing where you interject with comments and then you slowly derail it where you're telling a story now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, just to mess with them. Mm. Uh, ten probably doesn't succeed, yeah. but probably um, high enough not to look make it look like I'm being an intentional ass. No, oh, and he um. When you just start like chiming in your own stuff, he does start asking about you guys. Mm-hmm. Just asking about where you're from. The equivalent of what are your hopes and dreams kind of thing. So you, I'm sure you're, some of you tell him some of the stuff you told other people. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lucille is pretty much an open book about why she's here. Um, she does comment that she's not too worried about the ticks in Tickwood. Uh, a lot of the larger... Uh, Andoran is sandwiched between two very large forests that she describes as spirited due to a, a high fey population, so it's probably not going to be too bad. Yeah. 
I mean, um, some, some of them drown some lumberjacks in small ponds, but some of the pixies are really good at playing diddly winks. So, hey. <laughs> and I, I've heard there's some fae nearby here, but I've never run across anything nearby. So I assume that they're all just made up around here. Yeah, probably not. He does spend a lot of his time kind of um, nearby um, fix. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of sparks up your co- conversation with you about like stuff like what you would be doing if you weren't part of the clergy or like ending questions like, so how did you come to Sandpoint? Yada yada. And just go on to say that I was born and raised in the church. I, you know, I, Sandpoint is the only place I've ever known. So naturally, I do everything I can to help the people within. Well, that's so, good to hear. The world needs better people like you. Um, I, I myself have a little bit of a greedy streak sometimes. I have a, I mean, I, I think that's just a merchant's curse, you know? Um, sometimes you see money and you just go for it. Honestly, the only good time, the only things I've ever done that were considered good were times where things have turned out well for me. So I don't know why I don't do it more. I mean, it's how I met my wife. I mean, man, I wish I, I, I wish you could meet her. Um, she's deathly sick up in Magnamar right now. Um, she told me to go, but I still worry. Sounds motive on that one. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Not really because I intend to, you yeah. know, haha, but... Well, nope. <laughs> Probably can't tell. Well, um, Lucilla, you definitely, he is telling the truth, but he seems like to, like, trying to play off how sick mm. she is. Ah, sympathy card. Mm. Well, I'm... So he's, well, he's trying not to, like, over, like, She's probably sicker than what he's describing. Oh, okay. The other way around. Gotcha. Yeah. But he doesn't... He's trying not to bring it up or anything. Try to dour the mood. Mm. Well, I, I'm glad that she's at least understanding enough to to let you venture out a bit. And I'm glad that... Uh, well, I hope she starts feeling better soon. I'm sorry to hear for her health. But I'm sure Sarah and Ray will look out after her. I'll be sure to keep her in my prayers. Oh, yes. Fine Varesian woman she is. Um, met her when her caravan rescued me from um, a vicious rain. Um, vicious rain? Yeah. Um, talk, he basically starts to, like, talking about the storm that like threatened to like push him over. Like His horse got sick during the travel. There was like one of his first jaunts as a fledgling merchant. Mm. Um. He does talk as as you guys go on about a little bit about how his family was what what much more well off when he before he was born, but they've kind of fallen on harder times, and he's trying to bring them back to the forefront of like nobility. Mm. Uh, he's like, oh yes, enough about me though, and he kind of points at the um, the woods coming up close. He's like, to the tick woods. Um, everyone dismounts and let's park our horses outside of the forest and. We can catch ourselves some mighty fine dinner. I'm sure um, Amiko will be delighted to feed it, feed the um, the inn with us. So, what are we using to hunt it with? Well, you have a weapon there, don't you? I wouldn't necessarily qualify as a hunting weapon, but sure, I suppose this will do the trick. He points at Emmanuel. He has a bow. I have I, this, uh, and he pulls out his rapier. I have this, and he does a couple flourishing motions. Have you been hunting before? I unwind my whip. <laughs> uh, generally only fox hunting, but, you know, live and learn, and it's exciting to try. Uh, okay. Fix, would you like to carry this? And he offers the lance, which is essentially just a long spear. But you'd have to use it two-handed off horse. That, that looks a bit unwieldy for me, unfortunately. Uh, is she normal size? Yeah, and yeah, really small. It's just a little text based. Yeah. Uh, fine. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Feel a bit naked without my shield, though. But all right. Well, as you say, it would keep the boar at bay. Fair, fair. Yeah. Can't really Jump. parry a tusk. Um. So I forgot to ask: Is anyone good at tracking? I didn't really hire somebody for this, but... Uh, Leon is has quite the nose for the scent. 
He is a racing snake, but he does have some utility to him. I mean, I'm, I feel relatively at home in the forest. I wouldn't say I'm properly trained in survival, but I managed to find my way around, at least in the local woods. Huzzah, then. That means we have two trackers. Let us be off. And he just flourishes his rapier again. It clearly doesn't really use it much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not to kill a boar. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to go ahead and roll me some sur- survival to try to track. Uh, Leon will try and aid. I'm not very good, nope. but I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> yeah. Plus two. Better with fish. How do you add uh, aid with a... You can just plus two it after you roll. A little okay. add two to it. All right. Make it easy on yourself for now. Then I'll just give a plus two. Two. Okay. He was going right. to aid fix... Okay. So, yeah, with a uh, uh, fix with the uh, aid, um, you do pick up on some tracks, um, and you all begin to head into the, the woods. You do come across a sight of a boar in the distance. Um, it hasn't quite noticed you yet. You are, um, I don't know, what's the, what's the correct term? Downwind of it? Uh, yeah. Or it doesn't see you? Uh, upwind. Oh yeah, downwind. Sorry, yeah, downwind. Yep, yep. Yep. So it won't send you. You're downwind of it, so it doesn't seem to notice you yet. So it's all up to you how you how you approach. Mm, that depends. Do we want to attempt a valiant spear into its gut, or should I fire off arrows? I would say arrows. Got my sling here. Yeah. What's your range there? How close do we need to get? I prefer uh, about 80 feet. 50 feet for me is what I need. I think we could sneak up that close. Yeah, uh, I, I I keep this sling wrapped as like a lever strap around my wrist, so I, I unwind it. And I can just, it technically doesn't require ammunition because you can just grab pebbles off the ground. Yeah. Slings are the best backup weapon. At low they low. do terrible damage as a small character, but you never run out. It costs literally zero gold to pick one up. Yeah. Well, even if you're medium, they do zero damage. 1d3 mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, I do 1d3. 1d4 for medium. Well, All right. Does anyone else there have a ranged attack? Nope. Staring at Rish. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Mm, nothing. I could say we try and, it, but it's loud. <laughs> say we try and gain some uh, ground on it and get within range. Okay. So you want to try to move stealth up closer? Or? Yep. Here I go. Eleven. Yeah. Oh. Um, you guys are able to get relatively close. Um, you probably can get within um, forty feet. Before it starts taking any kind of notice, like it doesn't even notice I'm, you, but it just kind of it kind of ticks its head up a little bit. Yeah, I'm staying back. At, I'm staying back at fifty. Yeah, okay. we want we just wanted to get within fifty feet so that she would have range and I would have range. Before we attack, though, uh, I would like to perform a knowledge nature about boars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thirteen. You guys can go ahead and position yourselves. He'd so be over here, so you guys can get closer as, if you wish. Oh, yeah, I'll hold up the arrow thing so you can adjust yourself to 50. Yeah. Uh, I would have recommended that we had skirted over woods to woods. Is that okay, Richard? Yeah. Okay. You guys have stealth, so this is still within 50 feet over here. Yep. Um, Because the reason why I was doing the knowledge nature is just I wanted to uh, use a round to give bardic inspiration to uh, Emmanuel and I. For yeah. a plus one to the attack roll. And I would uh, point out, now that we're closer, that the heart and lungs, the vital areas, are right under the front arm, just in the chest area, if you'll aim there, to give you a plus two to attack. Mm-hmm. So it's plus three for total, plus 
two to you. Boosting buddies. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, and this will be surprise round. Yep. Here I go. Sling. 16. 16 will hit. That's two cool. bludgeoning damage. That's almost as good as I can get. <laughs> All right, so I've got a plus what from you, Lucilla? Plus one. Okay, so... I didn't do an eight. A 16 to hit. Yep, both of those hit. And that expended one round okay. of bardic. So, so it definitely takes notice of both of you, though. Huh? And in typical boar fashion, it, ch- it um, snarls and makes its pig cry and charges at you. Awesome. No good. Because it is a wild boar. They are not known for their temperament. Rage elemental. Oh, they're known for their temperament. Not their not peaceful in a good temperament. Way. Exactly. Oh, thank God. I go before it this time. <laughs> oh, another one for initiative. <laughs> Rocking it. Hey, he rolled a natural one, but he has a plus seven. Oh, he is a dandy fellow. I mean, hi, Pot. Have you met Kettle? <laughs> I'm ready for whatever ambush is going to happen here because I have a feeling if there were no possibility of anything else, there would not be a battle map for killing a single boar. <laughs> Unless it's just way stronger than I think it is. So, Afixa, you're up first. All right. Seeing us about to charge, is going to move up and uh, see, I can't brace or anything like that. So, uh, just get ready to uh, attack with the lance because as a, as a oh wait this isn't a surprise round okay no. so this is me moving up and as standard action am I able to brace what's yeah, you're able to brace. Are? Okay. you can do like a def- oh yeah you've got a spear there yeah. is a brace for charging oh. uh, if yeah if within... it's got up if it's brace one let's see special ability brace okay sweet uh, if you Use a right action to set a brace against a charge. You deal double damage on a successful hit. Nice. I, I really nice ability that don't often think of because most of the time charges just happen. You don't right. have a telegraph. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll delay till after the boar. Gotcha. So, uh, are these bushes or trees around me? Right. A um, little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Okay. Uh, I want to scamper up a tree. Okay, go ahead and give me a climb check. No problem. 21. Oh, yeah. You scale that tree. Uh, it turns out there was a wonderful trait that let me pick one strength-based skill to use dex for. So, <laughs> yeah, so you just wrap your whip around one of the branches and mm-hmm. just swing yourself up. Uh, is that my movement or my full turn? Um, I'll say movement. You would only be able to get half your movement up the tree, but that should be fine to get on top of the tree. Yeah, I just want to sit on a branch and then fling another rock at it. Yep, go for it. Uh, your bonus is gone now, right, Cope? Uh, if you already used it, yes. I did. Okay, so it's just the plus one for myself, then. Pew! It's for two. <laughs> Pew! <laughs> and I'm up a tree! Ha! Thanking shower, uh, shower it with arrows from above. I have Elder. thumbs! Nature's trump card! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was saying I don't think Haldor has any ranged weapons. Yeah, you won't need it for long. Yep, so I'm going to step up here. And then... What can I... Is there anything I can do as a standard action? I don't think so. You can hold an attacker when they get in range. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll a 1d3 to determine who it attacks. Because it's just seeing red right now. It's going for a fix it. It is going to charge. All right. So, ready to attack. 18. That will hit. All right. What's the damage for the lance? Oh, goodness. Uh, 1d8. 1d8. So, 2d8 damage. Since I braced it. All you, uh, I'm shouting out uh, natural facts about it. So, you all get plus one to your attack and uh, AC. Okay. So either way, it still hits. Yeah, it still hits. I was just afraid to tackle. So, six second. damage. Okay, it takes it, and it's going to try to gore you. Now, out of curiosity, because uh, since it is a reach weapon, I believe, is it? Yes. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, you um, have combat reflexes, don't you? Yeah. Well, not yet, but I still 
potentially have an attack of opportunity because when it moved here, that was my ready to attack. So when I leave that square, it would technically be an attack of opportunity? I think so. Okay. So, go for it. I forgot that that brace isn't considered a, a reaction thing. Nope. Uh, that's not yeah, going to cut even it. Even with the bonus from Lucilla, wouldn't hit. It's one, yeah. Even with its minus two for charging? Nope, it still wouldn't hit. Okay. So that'd make it an 11. Ah, gotcha. All right. It is going to gore you. This will be a plus two on top of what it, I roll. So a 13 would miss you, I imagine. Yep. And that's it. Uh, let's see. Offhand, what do we roll about charging through allied squares? Uh, no, because there's an ability that specifically yeah. says you can do that. Yep. All right. That's what I thought. Well, move 30 feet. You can probably charge through me because I'm up a tree, but. Uh. Oh, he's using his right angle attack. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, yeah. the triangle. And that's a 15 foot cone. And I'll use the uh, point to make the uh, will save one higher. So. It is color sprays. Two hit die or less. It is pretty much just out of the fight now. <laughs> Magic make hunting easy. Um. So, oh, there's no sport in that. He's going to come up and make an attack. Because he's like, ha ha. Sport is it's about food. I have to find this guy again. <laughs> I mean, the critter is unconscious. <laughs> yeah, but I, he, 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 could have grabbed a four-round action. I know, I know. I'm just not sure what his AC would be if he's helpless. Oh yeah, that would that would knock it to zero, and it can't be ferocious when it's stunned to death. So mm. yeah. So Manual all in all, all, five foot step over, pull his dagger and coup de gras. And he's a like, good show. Went quicker and easier than expected. <laughs> um, to answer Michael your question earlier. Uh, it didn't come with a map for this. It's it pretty much just expected me to run this ad lib, mm -hmm. but I just found a, a random forest map for it. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> a little peek behind the curtain there. I uh, and... so go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead first. I was just gonna say I I come back down the tree, just sliding down my whip like Spider Man, and then just give it a tug and recoil it again. <laughs> Manuel would step back and hand his dagger over to Haldor and say, My good man, you may do the honors. And then if Ixa will hand Emmanuel his uh, lance back, say, Thank you, that came in handy. Certainly, I hope you enjoyed your first hunting trip. Time to rage carve. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> Stop throwing organs! <laughs> it's so the music from the, the new knife. Doom video game turns on <laughs> and just starts stepping so, away. We, we're we're walking, walking away spray of blood as the camera off. focuses on the rest of us. The humanoids all shocked and horror except for <laughs> the lizard. And then cuts back and it's all nice cold cuts on plates. I can't. <laughs> Everybody but Rish and Haldor have the uh, thousand yard stare. <laughs> Um, yeah, all in all, um, successful hunt. Aldern would expect other people to carry the boar back, whether in pieces or whole. It is a very large beast, and mm -hmm. he's a very dainty boy. Well, <laughs> he's the one that secured the kill, so he has to carry it. Keep what you kill. It's, it's how we did it in my family back on the farm. Hmm. I have a beast who could uh, do a good job of dragging that out. Excellent idea. And, um, so to save kind of like some issues with that, like role playing that out, um, it's easy enough to get the boar back to town, um, complete with um, five horses and a snake. Mm -hmm. um, I'd hope. No end of ways to get it back. So we do manage to get back to town. Yes, I give Richard two gold. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You get two gold from me as well. It's a deal. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I really thought that that was going to be a plot point. And that's what um, Lucilia says out loud. <laughs> I love y'all using your characters to guess into the AP consistently. I I wrote a character who her entire thing was is that she heard adventuring stories from other adventurers. So she thinks in context of that. It's like someone who only knows police work from Die Hard. So <laughs> when they join the force... They're all like, when we jump out the building with a fire hose. I think a worse example would be goddamn lethal weapon. They fucking yeah. don't take any prisoners there. Mm-hmm. I mean, not that John McClane makes much prisoners either. Yeah. But he at least pretends like he's going to. But it's the not difference... Christmas Eve right now. Yeah. <laughs> the difference is, is John McClane finds himself in a situation, lethal weapon, they look for it. Mm-hmm. Like, if... The attack on Nakatomi Plaza, the first Die Hard, didn't happen. That was just going to be a somewhat awkward reunion with his wife. And a kind of an emotionally tense evening. And then he goes home. He wasn't going to pull out a gun to start trying to find people to shoot. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mel Gibson strapping a fire hose around the stilt on the leg of a house over the beach. And trying to pull it away with his dually. Oh, man. Uh, Yep. Those movies, I swear. Um, Just, uh, Loki's away, so I'll be right back. Go ahead. Take a couple more bites of my food that I haven't eaten yet. Oh, now mm-hmm. Gombo's gone and she, uh, Loki's back. <laughs> oh, Gombo stepped away? Yeah, For a second. Because you had stepped away. Alright, well, I'm going to fill up my water then, so he'll probably be back as I step away. <laughs> I'm also going to step away. It's a bit funny how we've never seen Gambo and Loki in the same place at once. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone tried to keep up that ruse in the D&D group before. <laughs> when it's online. Try to, if they're good enough at doing voices, be two people, but never talk at the same time. Mm-hmm. Alright, now I'm back back. No worries, still waiting on Gambo anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think everyone's back except for Copna. <laughs> That's okay. He is legend. <laughs> yeah. Um, full disclosure now that you've participated in some of them, not every encounter is going to be a be-all and all drag-out fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some of them are just going to be mostly fluff fights. Is the world at stake? Not against the boar. <laughs> nope, just the boar states. Uh-huh. And I was very tempted since I'm on my phone while I was peeing to be like, no, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that boar had the lich template. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the meat's gonna be awful. That, I'm disappointed that that boar went down just as fast as the giant one in the Underdark. <laughs> <laughs> boar sounds like they're gonna be dangerous, but anyone who's good enough at playing a game like this, I is beat gonna, like, that sucker up. Floor. By the way, <laughs> oh, I beat this one up too. <laughs> you guys just got really good rolls. It had rage, reckless attack, and um, relentless. <laughs> This one had a bleed effect, but it never got to hit anybody. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. And that's why humans kill boars. And just like in the other boar fight, Nogrim didn't do anything. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, you know, this time he has an excuse being several thousand miles and possibly dimensions away. Yeah. Yeah, my, my setting is not Galorian. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So you find your way back to um, the um, Rusty Dragon. Um, it would be funny if he just hopped out of a dimension portal. Okay, <laughs> help us with the boar fight and just left with no explanation. Never mentioned again. <laughs> he just turns back as he's stepping through the portal and says, everybody gets one. And then it's just close. <laughs> Wait, which one of us is one? Was that? <laughs> and he's There's gone. four more ones. It was a group on. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. We go back to the tavern. Yeah, you go back to the tavern, and um, Aldern comes in like he owns the place, and he's like, "I've brought dinner," and just proceeds to have you guys bring in the um, boar, which I say you guys, which. Honestly, 
at this point, it probably seems to me like Emmanuel is going to help him. Mm-hmm. Oh no, Emmanuel's he doesn't well, not you, do but you're physical la- labor. <laughs> I got I got eight strength. Haldor would probably be able to carry it in. Uh, regardless, I'm not going to like stress this too much. Mm-hmm. We could also say it's some people that are from around the town that are like the dock workers or something that were drinking, bring it in. Um, Amico takes it to the back, like. Well, I hope everyone likes pork, because we're going to have it for the next three days. <laughs> I've often wanted to taste the feet. I mean, you'll have to wait a couple of days. I'm going to pickle those. Excellent. I hear that's the way they do it here. Won't say no to bacon, though. <laughs> the rest of the night for this is pretty uneventful if you wanted to do anything else for the night. Um, uh, there's plenty of town if you want to do stuff there. Um, it's not so late in the day that everything's closed, but it's getting yeah. to the point where most things are closing. While uh, we're uh, enjoying dinner, I'll share some of my findings uh, with the rest of the group. So I know that I I'm was just about to bring it up in character. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Jewel man and other learn anything in note? Yes. A little bit of uh, reading on the history of the town. Uh, so a few years ago, apparently there was a uh, a bit of a serial killer that was on the loose. Uh, some woodworker of some sort. It's always the woodworkers. Either way, he had a shrine he built out on Chopper Island. Isle. To uh, Pazuzu. Dramatic sure. pause to see if that registers with anyone. Bless you. <laughs> now he's doing Pazuzu. it. Pazuzu. Pazuzu. Ominous lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> we look over and it's just some guy with like, just a sheet of metal that he's warbling. Like, sorry. <laughs> oh, blue guy. Anyway. Ami- Amiko's just in the corner and she accidentally casts a spell when she's playing her music. Sorry, <laughs> happens occasionally. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Pazuzu, according to my research, is a uh, a demon lord, rival of the Mosh Two. Pretty grisly stuff. Might be connected. It was, was pretty close to around the time that the old church burned down. Mm-hmm. Very pretty bad. Auspicious timing. So, what are you suggesting? Collecting facts, culture, motivation, that kind of thing. Someone was killing people and gathering up body parts for a shrine to a high demon. And now the bones of a holy man go missing during an attack. Dang. Melgar often work dark forces. I was not able to find spell wanted help protect against evil. Too bad. So how's your day, Haldor? <laughs> uh, it didn't do much. <laughs> but I'm <Nothing>? Tish. <laughs> okay. Just slaying witches and laying bitches. <clears throat> or was it laying witches or slaying bitches? <laughs> Honestly, when you imbibe enough alcohol, you start forgetting which is which. First one, and the other. (laughs) Which is which? I'm sorry, I'm having a day. (laughs) Haldor, I hate those days where I don't go through with the plans that I've laid. (laughs) Or lay the plans that I had. (laughs) Stoic silence from the Viking. <laughs> <laughs> My character would honestly have no way of knowing anything. This is gombo out of character. Yeah, this is completely <laughs> us just trying to make puns. It's the, that it's that scene in the movie where people don't actually know what happened, mm-hmm. but everything just sounds like an innuendo. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. hearing it from the one guy's point of view. It's like everyone sitting at the table eating in the Matrix. So I heard you. Uh, did the test scenario with the lady in red today. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, 
um, other than conversation, the night, I guess, passes without an, uh, any other ado. Yep. And next day comes up. And let's see. Who would be up first of the group, you would think? If Ix will probably try to make it a point to see the sunrise every morning. Okay. Is uh, her is Saren Ray the sun god? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I imagine Lucilia is a morning person, but definitely, I would say Fix would be up for me with the whole Saren Ray thing, like one hundred percent. Okay. So Emmanuel, anyone who's... I was gonna say Emmanuel's up early, but it takes a long time to clean himself, clean his clothes, and comb his hair. Um, so anyone who would be up around sunrise, you hear the door slam open to the tavern as a, um, a sharp tongue command is uttered in a strange language. Um, I'm almost 100% positive none of you speak this language, as it is a um, Tian Sha specific language. Gotcha. That just means I need to put more ranks in linguistics. <laughs> Um, Afixa, you would know this man, though. Um, he is a local aristocrat by the name of Longiku Kaijutsu. <laughs> and he comes barging in, stomping forward to um, demand something um, you can't quite make out um, to the halfling woman who looks at him a little annoyed, but really doesn't seem to be reacting to him much. Before Miko comes storming out of her room, and they begin to have a shouting match in this language. Let Barbar wake up, Rishpa. Yeah, um, anyone who would be awoken by some loud yeah. screaming at each other. Can I do a linguistics to try to understand the gist? Yeah, go ahead and give me a linguistics if you want to try to understand the gist of what's going on. 17? So you have a good um, family, but even good families argue. Uh-huh. It's definitely a bad family argument that you're witnessing. Gotcha, yeah. Lucilia has a brother, she understands. Um, you don't know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah, but it's like the but vibe. You, get, you, you get the vibe from it. Yep. Um, he's like, they like are screaming back and forth at each other for like several minutes before he like, um, he um, sees the um, some of you out, out here. I, I very obviously try to run and hide. Yeah, Emmanuel would have come out at all the... Uh, tilts her head as they turn to look at her. Yeah. Emmanuel, you seem the most approachable for what he's trying to do. Um, he comes over and starts like, <clears throat> pointing at your chest. Uh, like, not quite put, put like pointing and hitting you with it, but like doing that thing where like, they're trying to chastise you. Uh, basically talking about how you endangered the townsfolk with your antics against the goblins and that you should have hand, let the town defend itself and handle let the d guard handle it and leave it to the trained professionals, essentially. Does he understand the language? I think he's speaking common. Yeah, he's speaking common right now. Okay. Dear sir... I beseech you, you must understand that I am the son of the Lord General Father. I have been trained in military combat. I know at all times what I am doing when I command forces. Of course you are wrong. Just what this town needs, another charlatan leading a band of vagrants, filthy vagrants of that. That is uh, disgusting talk. I lead no band of filthy vagrants. Aldor enters the room. <laughs> I didn't say anything about a charlatan. <laughs> <laughs> My vagrants are clean. Yeah. Um, at this point, Amiko is like, now you just listen here. You get the fuck out of my bar before I um, basically show you what for. I don't know how really she would word it otherwise. Haldor! Haldor, my good man! Um, it's about this time that you see him get visibly angry, and he actually tries to grab Amiko by her hair and try to pull her out of the bar. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He'd restrain this guy. Basically, um, I don't know, slap or punch or however he could get this guy's hands off of Amiku. 
Um, yeah, go ahead and just roll a d20 real quick. Okay. It was either that or I was going to dirty trick uh, punch him in the ball. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Again, Haldor! Haldor, yeah. where are you now? Wake up! Uh, it is not hard to hit this guy. <laughs> his AC is below 10. <laughs> He's wearing no armor and he has very bad decks. As you like slap him, him across to, the face. I try to hit him to hurt him. I try to direct Just... him or, or deflect him from grabbing the woman. Mm. You know, slapping hands away or pushing away or shoving or tripping, however I could get him away. Yeah. Um, as soon as you slap him, he lets go and he like backs up and like he looks affronted that someone dared touch him like that. And he's like, he looks at you and looks at um, Amiko and like, like, he um, speaks in common to her and basically says, you're as dead to me as your mother. Before turning and storming out of the bar. But before he gets out to the end of it, she actually throws her ladle that she's been holding that's, like, partially covered in soup. Nice. Into the air, like, as he's walking out, and it hits him in the back of the head as he stumbles forward out of the door. And don't come back! She looks a little solemn as she goes and retrieves her ladle, and she's like, huh. Ah. I guess I'll need to clean this now since Jackass Stew is not on the menu. Families, right? Uh, I get it. Jackass Stew, that's rather funny. Uh, thanks. My, my, my wit's one of my traits. Um, and she kind of just saunters off like, thanks for the help. Um, you know what? Another week of free stay for all of you. Oh, no, madam. If, if anything is afoot, we'd be happy to help. No, no, it was just my dad talking about how he thinks that we should all, like, me and him should move to Magnamar where it's safe and not somewhere where we're going to be attacked by goblins. Hmm, where's Magnamar? You would know, in character. It's not okay. far from here. It's like, the, it's the major city nearby. Okay. Hmm, that's I a mean, pity. How long have you been in this town? Um, not as long as him. I left when I was younger to go exploring. Um, eventually came back and started my own bar, if you didn't tell or couldn't tell that is my father yes i'm a noble yes it sucks oh, but the pressures the pressures our parents put upon us uh he can keep his nobility and shove it for all i care i'm perfectly fine running my bar i mean indeed it's not like cities would be any safer uh i spent like half my life in the capital of andoran and cities got plenty of dangers i once saw a rat lay eggs in a homeless man's beard Wait, rats lay eggs? Apparently. <laughs> mm. I need to tell that one next time. And then um, it, it gets pretty wild up at the capital. Or down, I suppose. This is farther north. Uh, well, I'm not going to be much fun to be around for now, so sorry for the rude wake-up call, but thanks for the help. And she kind of just excuses herself and goes to the back of the room. Oh, my lady, where are the bath? Uh, the baths. We're surrounded by water. Go pick a spot. Pick Emmanuel, a spot. before you go, hold up. Did you say that your father's name was General Father? Uh, no, Lord General Father. <laughs> Lord General Father. He, he, no, his no, name, no. He turns around and he starts to walk off. General Father. That would be father? ridiculous. <laughs> no, he, he's a priest as well. He's a lord, he's a general, and he's a priest. Right? Oh, are you so It's lord. What the oh, fuck is that? That? Uh, that was a milkshake being finished. <laughs> <laughs> By whom? It is a mystery. I mean, I have had a milkshake in maybe eight years. It is Lord General Father. After that Father. one time, all the boys came to your yard, huh? <laughs> Took me forever to get him out. <laughs> Still I just here. come out with a broom. Get! get. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. Yes, Lord General Father Depard. Yeah. Wait, his first name is Father? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious. What? What? As you were. <laughs> and he returned and walked away. <laughs> I still think his, the Father is a title of his... Admission to like clergy of some kind, maybe. I don't know. Mm. 
Yeah, you have another day ahead of you guys if you wish to do anything. Uh, uh, Fix would want to stop by the armory. Um, yeah. Um, blah, 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 blah. Names, words. Savah? Yeah, Savah's armory. Um, yeah, and you see the same person that um, Haldor saw the day before. Mm. Um, armor on for show, more, mm. but like taking off certain pieces for comfort. So, hey, fix a long time. Well, not yeah. long. Well, not too long. Um, I actually came to speak to you. Um, I think there was an order, a uh, mistake with my order, because I was just looking for, you know, a, a show sword, you know, something, no real edge, you know, this is, it was all just to represent the church, and, you know, she would draw back the sheath and show the true blade to it and say, I, I certainly hope you didn't give my the weapon that was scheduled for me to somebody that's actually expecting a live blade. Oh, no, that one I got for you. Um, I figured you were old enough to need a new, uh, a real blade for once. Oh, well, um, I, thank you. I would have appreciated if information ahead of time. That could have been tragic otherwise, potentially. <laughs> eh, Saren Ray protects and all that. And besides, you know, when you were really going to need it, and what would you have done with a blunted instrument, especially during that whole night? I didn't, you know, you can't ever plan for what's going to go wrong. Well, Might as well true. plan for what's going to go right. That's true. All right. Well, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're square and, you know, some poor hapless adventurer isn't going to find himself up shit creek. I mean, they probably will. They're adventurers. Half well, of them are bound to find some themselves up to some kind of shit creek. True enough. But at least they have a weapon that they expect to have an edge rather than one that's only doesn't. Yes, that is fair. Um... And she like kind of thinks for a moment, like, I should start selling joke weapons, but that'd probably end up bad for me. Depends on how you do it, because I'm sure I can think of kids certainly enjoying them, as long as, you know, again, joke weapons are, you know, not mistaken for the real thing, because that, that's just asking for trouble. She just, uh, you just see her writing a note to herself, invest in child-sized weaponry. <laughs> Can we just take a moment to appreciate this person's basically did the medieval equivalent of, you know what? Just for the hell of it, I'm going to load your parade rifle with live rounds. <laughs> <Right. laughs> More or less, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What could happen? It's one of my favorite lines from The Family Guy where there's a fire mm -hmm. and the dog guy or the dog grabs a fire extinguisher and squeezes it, and its silly snakes come out onto the fire, and it all blows up. And you see the family guy go, I would risk my family's safety for physical comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like a lot I of like family guys. I like the Coke doesn't know any of family guys' <laughs> character names. <laughs> the Sorry, dog guy been... and family guy. <laughs> it's been way too long. Most of the show I don't care for, but occasionally there's some genuinely good ones. Mm. Yeah, every now and then there's a good episode or a good joke, but sometimes they're mostly just good for background noise. Uh -huh. You're like, oh, hey, that could kind of be funny right there. Okay, moving on. So Fixer does that. Anyone else want to do anything for the day? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go fishing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go up to junk beach so that way i can look out at chopper island that's great because as you approach you see a naked ass more man in the water bathing you know what i'll check out the island <laughs> <laughs> well you'll check out the what <laughs> no i'm joking um actually come to think of it, i don't actually have any fishing supplies what would those cost um, I don't know. I'll say like, like coppers. Two, like two silver for good quality ones that aren't gonna break on you. Yeah, I'll just say that's reasonable. Easy enough. Yeah, because it's, it's just basically a line and a hook, really. Yep. It's not like it has an actual reel back then. Yeah. If you've got a dagger, you can cut down a uh, mm -hmm. little stick. Yeah. No, I'm gonna go fishing. So uh, just don't swim too close. Uh. -uh. Or otherwise, something might get hooked. Also, to um, not put a uh, 
damper in it, you probably would not be swimming there because that's literally their trash beach. Uh-huh. You'd mm. probably be. No, I like it to expose myself. Okay. <laughs> Don't. Just watch out for the choppers. Helicopters are low flying and could get dangerous. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna be looking out, uh, looking at Chopper Island from a distance, and just for the hell of it, I'll just roll like a flat one d twenty, maybe yep. to see how good I fish. <laughs> yeah, that that makes sense. I am at Junk Beach. Um, you actually fish out a piece of bent metal. <laughs> nice. Hey, at least it wasn't the boot. Actually, the boot probably would have been more fitting with the narrative you're t- spinning for yourself. Um, so what are you, are you just looking at Chopper's Island or are you trying yeah, to like, just get observing a sense it, from, it? A, from a distance? Yeah. Um, it looks like it had used to have a shack on it. That's been burnt down, mm-hmm. but more or less it's just a small little Island. Cool. Is that the Island you were talking about? Uh, how far away is he from me? Um, I don't know. Close enough to here. So, okay. I would like to throw the piece of metal. Oh, careful! There's enough stuff around in here. Someone Put some clothes de- on. I'm bathing. I'm underwater. There's nothing to see. There's, except there's so trun- much rusted metal. Someone's trunk has definitely opened in here. Just watch out for the little spiny fish that try to swim up urethras. I'm a fr- What? <laughs> <laughs> I hear they swim up the pee. And he grabs his junk and he runs out. So you just see a streak of a man running past. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about for Reesh and Haldor? There's other bars in town. I mean, I already had to grab my junk and run away once. <laughs> <laughs> Why not go for a second time? <laughs> that, was, that, was, uh, that was pretty good. Was you know what? Here a point for you two. <laughs> I'm giving away like candy today. Mm. Uh, probably similar, but going over to Tanner's Bridge or in the Mill Pond to see if I can't catch a freshwater fish. Oh, you know, uh, I managed to sell the one. <laughs> how do you fish? Like, I, I can't help but imagine me. you just like literally laying down on the bridge and dunking your head in the water and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have a fishing net. Okay, that's probably more reasonable. (laughs) No, she goes into the water and then hides underneath the sand on the floor until a fish comes by. (laughs) Uh, Unfortunately, it's a little hard to catch a fish here. Um, Being so close to the... um, uh, What's it called? The the, um, people who get the logs and cut them up for timber and Mm. stuff. Lumberjacks. Lumber mill. It's right, right on the water here. It kind of chases away a lot of um, fish with the noise it causes. I didn't want to interrupt y'all, but I really wanted everyone to come to the conclusion that Rishpa goes to the fish market, buys one for two copper pieces, and then goes and sells it for a silver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what about for Haldor today? Is there another redhead around? <laughs> um... There's plenty of different bars if you want to go with one of those. There's all kinds of like different things in town if you just wanted to look around. Yeah, I guess I'll just look around town. Try to find the redhead again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, looking around town, there's a map store, there's rings shop, there's all kinds of, there's like locksmiths, just the things you would find in normal towns and stuff. Out of anything different, um, there's a um, place called Pillbug's Pantry that seems to sell alchemical um, stuff of some sort. There is um, there's the hagfish that's down um, here on the, the harbor that seems to be frequented by quite a bit of um, sailors and fishermen and gamblers. Um, it's, it has a big old sign on it um, that says, um, what's it called? Um, try to impress us with a yarn or try to um, the, try the hagfish challenge. 
What was the hagfish challenge again? We talked about um, they, this. He, they never explained it in detail, but um, basically you put a silver in, and if you win, you win the pot. And he says that it hasn't been won in over six months. All right. Calder will go and try that out. Um, so inside, um, it is exactly what you would expect to find um, a bar full of medieval sailors to look like. The um, guy who's behind the bar has a few missing teeth. Is that, well, if it isn't the hero that splattered the goblin the other day, saw that from across the street, that thing just turned into mush. What can I get for it? I'm looking to try out the hagfish challenge. Okay, we got. He like just yells out to the crowd, "We got us a challenger!" And uh, he points out um, over the um, the ceiling beam, and there's um, names carved on there. Zach, been in this business for ten years. Only twenty eight people have ever um, completed this challenge. And he um, he turns around to this um, aquarium. In the aquarium, you see what looks like a large eel. And he sticks a mug into the um, aquarium and pulls out the water that has turned into like a congealed slime. And he puts it in front of you. He's like, silver to play. You can finish finish the uh, mug. The pot's yours. I think there's about, oh, 250 silver in there today. All right. We'll put in a silver. And then I need um, five... Fortitude saves as you're basically trying to drink poison. Uh, I'm getting a bit of flashbacks from uh, Way of the Wicked here. (laughs) (laughs) Should should have taken delay poison. (laughs) Although, let's look at that list. (laughs) There's a delay potion or delay poison potion three at 300 gold pieces each. That way you only lose 275 gold pieces. <laughs> they said there were... Oh, yes. <laughs> how, many, how much silver did they say was in there? 250, so 25 gold worth. <laughs> but you see, what you don't understand, guys, is that if you do that, you get to win. <laughs> What's I the mean... real prize here? Technically, there's nothing stopping me from raging. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, I'll allow it. You're like, you yeah, put it up to your just face get mad. Start you smell it, and it's like rancid and <laughs> Start gross. barking at yourself. So you have to wait this. until you die. Do this. I have, I have a man rage. Like that. Yeah. Rage chug. Okay. Rage chug. <laughs> rage chug. I imagine him walking around like, you want me to do this? You want me to do this? Yeah! Punches someone, drinks <laughs> these <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. They got better. Uh, I'm guessing the DC is probably higher than 9, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he has hero points if he wants to use them, but I don't think he wants to. <laughs> what, what does a hero point do? Um, you could add 4, or you could um, re-roll. All right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and re-roll that 9. <laughs> what are you going to do? Okay, so um, since you rolled them all, what happens is you drink, you take a big gulp, and you're like, oh, this is thicker than it should be. (laughs) You take another drink, and you're like, oh, this one's not going down. And in a rage, you don't realize that you spit it all into the cup. And you're like, no, I am doing this. (laughs) And you drink, and you drink, and you drink down what you already spit up as well as more. I'm going to go ahead and give me one more fortitude save. Come on. This one's for all the marbles. Big money. Come on. How can something go? Yes! Um, this last, like this last bit held on to there for a second. And you're like, Oh God, I need to do this. I need to do this. And like you see people around, you see the blood vessels like bulging in your neck as you just, slam down the last one and like throw the mug against the wall as it shatters and they're like well you didn't lose you lost a little bit of it at first but technically you finished it that's the grossest thing i've seen in a while get his name <laughs> on the wall like Ma used to make 
Uh, so he didn't lose because what he puked up, he ended up drinking. Yeah, I, I just so, since yeah. he rolled all those fortitudes already, I'm like, you know what? This seems like a good idea, and it seems gross enough for a barbarian to do. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Disgusting. Um, so they do carve your name in the wall up above the head. Uh, they ask for the name. You give it to them. They carve it in there. And yeah, you basically get 25 gold worth of silver pieces. Now you're over encumbered. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be okay for a while. <laughs> Here's another 4,000 gold. You're still good. So, all this takes about most of, like, half, the first half of the day. Eventually, um, if anyone, does anyone ever return to the Rusty Dragon during the day? Probably when my fishing's ended. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bellor the Sheriff would be waiting there for you guys. More work? Um, not quite. Um, the... Um, the ranger that um, kind of frequents this area stopped by the town and I w- uh, thought you might want to meet with her. She knows a lot about the goblins around, uh, around here that might be able to fill you in on some more details of them. Thought you might be interested if you if you are, she's over at the garrison. I'm interested. That sounds good to me. Garrison's number 10 on the map, so you would mm-hmm. head over there, anyone who's around. <laughs> It's like right across the t- um, from where the mayor does all her business is this giant is the big one of the biggest buildings in the town. It functions as the garrison as well as the um, jail. Which, as you go in there, you you hear goblins in the cells below singing in their off key manner, mm-hmm. which sounds somehow sounds even worse now that they don't have a bard um, goblin singing along to help keep it in tune. My lord, why did we keep those alive? Uh, trying to find out where they came from, but they don't seem to really be wanting to give us any information. <laughs> yeah, Why well, not just set them free and follow them and see where they go? They generally scatter. And then we don't want to split up our forces. As we're a little mm. low on guards at the moment. Indeed. Um, the sheriff kind of leads you back um, to his essentially his office. Um, inside is a um, elven woman. Um, but as he introduces her, like, um, this here is Shalalu. Um, and she's like, sup, Bellows tor- told me of your work against the goblins. Well done. Uh, I extend my hand. Go, thank you. My name's Lucilia Dalyard. Oh, yeah. Full names. I'm supposed to do that in polite society. Shalalu and Ostan- uh, I don't know how Trying to think how to say your name. Sorry. Um, Shalalu Andosana. Mm. Emmanuel. Emmanuel Depard. Yeah, I'm not going to remember that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Uh, If she shakes my hand, I try my hardest to give like a firm handshake. um, She, she, um, eight strikes. It's it's not that. It's eight strikes, so it's not great, but I'm trying. Yeah, she, she matches likewise. She's not going to. Mm-hmm. Go harder or anything, but um, yeah, it's like, do you yeah, say, oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you say she was a local or somebody that fixed what she in? stopped by the town? Um, she seems to come by the town like once every few months, okay. Well, fix will probably still introduce herself. I'm a fixer, but you could just call me Fix. Uh, nice to meet you. I you said she was a ranger, town. yeah. I, I've been, I until very, very recently, uh, was at the uh chapel there. Um, so I heard you wanted to know something about goblins. I mean, I'm full of knowledge about the local area about them, if you want to hear anything. Yes, town attacked by Melgak. They have leader. You know where lairs are, yes? Um, I know a few, and she kind of thinks about it. Um, so there's five goblin tribes in the area. Fix one. Um, you- Chime in, say, uh, the leader is not another goblin, it seems. Uh, based on footprints, it's either human or elf or somewhere between. Huh. Well, I heard a little bit from li- listening into 
some mosswood goblins. That's one of the tribes. Um, the, there was a lot of chatter about some long longshanks who killed a lot of them. Um, now that I met you, it seems obvious from the description they were who they were talking about. Goblin tribes don't usually get along unless there's something big planned, and big plans obviously require big bosses, like your um, reptilian friend here says. Um, someone must have been moved to the goblins and organized them, which seems like bad news for all of us. Um, after she's, um, she talks about it, um, sh- um, he- Sheriff and Hemlock interrupts. He's like, she's also going to serve as a makeshift sheriff to the area and to scout out around the area as I'm going to be heading south to Magnamar to see about securing some additional soldiers for the next, in the next few weeks. And at least until the extent of the dra- of the goblin threat can be determined. Um, I've asked Shalou to sniff around um, the general area and see if she can place wherever these goblins have been built, play, placing residents. Though the locals seem to have taken to you a lot, so I hope you'll stay around uh, at least for the next few days or something to keep my worries down. I have nowhere to be beyond here. I haven't found a good I lead could, yet. I could temper my appointments and stay around. If you have any questions while I'm gone, um, if Shalev is in town, you can speak with her, as well as um, Mayor Deverin is always a good source to question. Uh, I will leave you to your meeting with Shalev, however, as I'm going to go prepare for my journey. She talks about the um, goblins themselves. Um, she knows that there's a tribe called the Bird Cruncher Goblins who live um, along the western edge of the Devil's Platter. They're, although, despite the name, they're the least aggressive of any of the goblins around. Um, there's the Lick-Toed Goblins of the Brine Stump Marsh. There's the Make seven sure you tooth- wear shoes. <laughs> there's the Seven Tooth Goblins from Shanks Woods. I oh, know, I'm a halfling. Um, there's shoes. the Mosswood Goblins. Um... They're large. They're likely the largest tribe, though they've been held back by because they feud within their own ranks often. There's also the uh, thistletop goblins who live in the Nettlewood Coast, um, east here. Um, the island kind of holds a passing resemblance to a decapitated head. Hmm. Um, honestly, I don't think that I've ever heard of them working with anyone other than what they consider their heroes of themselves they have they have a collection of people of goblins they refer to as heroes that i know a little bit about but as ter- in terms of um humans or the like i don't know they have to either be pretty aggressive or pretty convincing to get them to work with them could they have heard of we heroes and be interested I um, considering you killed many of them i doubt yeah they'll... Take you as a um, convincing new boss. Say Sarasara. <clears throat> well, no sh- problem with Melkak. Always killing amongst each other. Strongest always kill next strongest, and in their whole tribe, weak. And what tribe is this? Just goblins in general. Yes. Oh. Um. She's like, come, I'm going to be staying at the Rusty Dragon tonight anyway. I'll give you some, whatever other information I can give you over a round of drinks. All right. Um, basically, what she, the only thing else she really fills you in on is the, the goblin heroes, which are basically just some very nasty goblins. Um, there's Big Gugmut, who is a muscular and tall goblin from the Mosswood, who... Um, from what she's listening to, people say a lot of the goblins say that he had a hobgoblin for a mother and a wild boar for a father, and she cannot tell whether they're trying to be endearing or um, using it as an insult towards him. That could lead to a uh, a larger goblin, I think. Mm. It could fit our boss, who has these larger feet. 
There's Corvus. He was a champion of the Seventh Tooth Drive, but he disappeared about a year ago. Um, he was known to have a magical weapon that I was trying to track him down to get out of goblin hands, but never found him. There's some goblin cannibal named Vorka, um, the leader of the Thistletop Goblins, um, um, known as Rip Nugget. Probably make your go- uh, goblin jerky there, the fixer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I think the I think the um, worst of the bunch though is his name is Brathasmus. He is a bugbear that lives um, around the Nettlewood, who has a very large hatred for elves. I try to steer <laughs> away from him if, he, if it comes up. And then we got the twins, Shitstain and Butt Munch. <laughs> I mean, I've heard, I've heard those names before, so you're not too far off. Um, the slight tangent here, out of character, but have you guys ever done that thing where you watch clips from the old Speed Racer cartoon on YouTube, and it's just the actual clip, and it's the show is utter insanity out of context? Yes. yes. One of my personal favorites was they were like, and now my four sons named after the pillars of evil will destroy you. Hatred, vengeance, spite, ugly. (laughs) 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 The poorest will be you got the name ugly. Ugly. Oh no, not ugly. I hate to be ugly. Mm, one episode where Speed Racer refused to lose a race, even though that the guy that was racing against him was trying to win prize money to save his sister with a disease. He's like, yeah, well, can't be bad. helped. He has to earn it fair and square. There's some bad storylines in Speed Racer. Oh, Speed Racer! I, it was it was a show. It was. It's like in uh, in uh, Dragon Ball Super when Zenosama says he'll spare all of the universes if. That one wolf dude can beat Goku and Goku. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do think he does specify that Goku can't hold back, though. Yeah. yeah. It's not thrown to fight. <clears throat> not that he ever does, anyways. Yeah. I not stand that I think by, by would. the way, that the Speed Racer movie is an entertaining watch. I, I have to still see it. I haven't seen it, but I've heard. It good. is so <laughs> off the wall bizarre. You can't help but kind of find it a little endearing. It's not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it's an entertaining movie. But anyway, I think this is a good time to call it. Yeah. We're right around the time. Yeah.